Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Make good load on time. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Edit on do. I knew it couldn't be football time because it's not actually football time. I know. I pointed at you right when we were starting. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking it's football time because it's like. It's but it's all, not. It's all wrapped up. And then you you graded your own in the middle of it. I'm I'm a harsh critic of myself, guys. Man, got led to dawn time. Nope. And that was that was a hard no. <laughs> Welcome in to the what? show. What a start to the Megalodon. Whoops the doozles. <laughs> nope. Oh, man. Uh, this is going to be a big, big show, the Megalodon episode. Every matchup, Turkey Day Awards, all the Thanksgiving Day games, and a new Black Friday game. We're hungry for more. We got We've starts got of the week. Boom, boom, kicker. Yeah. You want it? We got it. It is Megalodon time. <laughs> nope. Oh, boy. That was like your uh, crackle welcome in moment. Yeah. Um, and there will be a giveaway. We will be sharing a hashtag sometime late in the show. We won't tell you when. And uh, it's for those that have made it through, that have made it through the entire Megalodon episode. If you tweet, uh, tag us, use the hashtag that we share. And you'll be eligible to win one of three pretty sweet items that Brooks has uh, rummaged around and found, which is a... He had it laying around in, in his garbage can. Yeah. Uh, well, you're saying it because he's so wealthy. Yes. These are this... Yeah, yeah, no, these are incredible items, but for Brooks, they're just like, I have like a hundred of them. Yeah. They're G pure trash for yeah. him. DK Metcalf signed jersey, Javante Williams signed jersey, and an AJ Brown signed mini helmet. And... Uh, so we've got three winners. This isn't just one... Mega prize is that is that I how know, we're let's doing check. it? Three winners, okay. three winners, yeah. and ideally, uh, we we get whatever hashtag we come up with trending on Twitter. Around. That's the big win. That's the big win for everybody. If it if it gets into the top three trending topics, I'll find another item to give away. Let's just put All right. it. Let's okay. put it that way. All we'll right. do a fourth. Um, but welcome in. Going to be a fun one. You can follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers. You can watch the Megalodon. Uh, it'll take up most of your hard drive space. But uh, YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballer. Subscribe. Click the bell. Got Sunday Live coming up. Man, uh, no bye weeks this week. Jason and I facing off in a a match. How did the um, the Twitter poll you put out there? You, you shared our rosters. I shared the entirety of our rosters, our starting lineups, our benches. It wasn't a poll. It was just me asking... Uh, the followers over on X just to get some hype going, or well, I I wanted to show everyone. You know, people like seeing our exact matchups, our leagues sometimes, and so I I put it out there asking who people think was gonna win, and it was a pretty split, probably like ninety five five. Um, that you, that your team will be victorious. Uh oh, just setting me up for disaster, Goliath. <laughs> yeah, right, like I. <laughs> Pretty much have very little chance. Oh, good. Oh, this yeah. is good. At winning this matchup against the monstrous, you are the worst. Dak, C.D. Lamb, the worst. The Dak Jason and Lamb yes. combo. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. What, what I do? You're conceding defeat. No, 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 no. I'm not conceding defeat. I'm saying that the Foot Clan said basically 95 to five. That Andy is clearly going to. What win he's this doing one. right now, Mike, is is he's trying to manipulate? Yeah. The universe to bestow upon his. Slightly inferior team, more points. The universe does not reward cowardice. <laughs> he, wait, Mike, Mike has taken a stand against you this year. I, he I stood up it. to the ultimate. I mean, it started with the Brees Hall cowardice. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, mm, yeah. That was good. That and was delicious. you've just carried that thread right through. Yeah. Um, we're hungry for more. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats.
I'll say this. I'm also hungry for more fantasy face-off because that's part of today's show as well. And I'm hungry for Mike spinning that wheel, mm-hmm. which is coming up. And I'm looking forward to it. I have an idea of what it better be. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be disappointed if it's not. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, that sets it up pretty well. All right, hungry for more players that we have seen some nibbles, some flashes. We're looking for more this week. Each of us have selected a name. I feel like Jason's is somewhat vindictive. <laughs> it's, uh, it's no, not. it's not. But go ahead. Why don't you start, Jason? Because I um, yeah, uh, I chickened out a little bit with this guy. And and I don't I don't necessarily blame you uh, for chickening out. It could be the wise decision. But I am hungry for more Kyron Williams, uh, the running back who was taking fantasy football by storm uh, earlier this year for the Los Angeles Rams. You know, what was it Cam Akers? Who's going to be the back? And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, off the waiver wire, Kyron Williams said, this is my job. I am great at it. Through the first six weeks of the season, Kyron Williams was the running back four before his injury. You've got to remember how good he was, averaging 17.4 half PPR points per game. I mean, it was absolutely outstanding. He was winning people all of those weeks. The only running backs ahead of him were Christian McCaffrey, Raheem Mostert, and Travis Etienne. Unfortunately, goes down to injury, went to the IR. This was a high ankle sprain, which usually has a three-week recovery where you get back on the field and you have a couple of weeks where maybe you're not up to full strength. Well, now this he's had five weeks off because of the bye week and the IR. And, you know, now they cut Daryl Henderson. Thank you for your service. <laughs> oh, you man. are no longer needed. It shows complete trust in Kyron Williams. I'm excited, especially in the matchup against Arizona, to to have fantasy managers get this guy back, to put him in their lineup. But what you're alluding to, Andy, your, your fear of maybe workload limitations, I think cutting Daryl Henderson shows that I don't know that they're going to really manage the workload, but we just saw this with Devon Achan, right? They had Jeff Wilson as a healthy scratch, and when that happened, it was like, oh, well, it's it's wheels up. But then the re-injury happened for Achan, and so I, you know, th- that nobody wants that here. Uh, I don't think you can predict or project that. Obviously, there is some percentage of injuries that you know, get re-aggravated, but um, this week I'm I'm v- especially against Arizona. Well, that's where he had his best performance of the year. I mean, when you look at the run that he had, it, part of it was touchdowns, six touchdowns in six weeks. You love it. Part of it was matchups, right? He, he dominated Indianapolis. They're the, like the worst uh, for running back. Dominated Arizona, who he plays this week. Um, when I think about the Daryl Henderson thing, in retrospect, like there's they didn't have a choice. That That's kind of what it was. They weren't going to cut Royce Freeman. They weren't going to cut Zach Evans because he was on the roster as their third string. So they just they had to they had to wave somebody. But um, you know, it, it certainly shows confidence in his ability to take a workload this week. Uh, and I think I think he's got the potential to be a league winner. I just wasn't sure it will be this week. But I think we're all hungry for more Kyron Williams. Mm-hmm. We could use uh, another valuable running back out there. Yeah, we uh, on this week's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty podcast, we did talk about Kyron. So you can also check that out because there's not enough fantasy footballers out there right now. But Cleveland, Baltimore, of, New Orleans, by the way, three of the next four matchups. So part of the hopefully oh, he takes care of Arizona. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it quick. But part of the Kyron discussion is what are what are you guys putting the probability right now that Kyron is the Rams running back next year? Fifty five percent. Okay, it's so more a, yeah, I'm about fifty fifty. But that that was the whole conversation of like, do we need to be open to the idea that? Kyron's actually their guy. I, w- I will say this: I uh, when I picked up Kyron and was shopping him in our league, I was trying to trade him and some more assets for Travis Etienne to a, another manager. Right, and their response was, "Sorry, I don't see Kyron as a keeper option." See, and, and so it is a split yes. thought process there. All right, I'll jump in. Mine's pretty quick. It's just I'm. It's Tony Pollard. Thank you, Tony, for doing something and not just something. I mean, RB twelve on the week. But a a man run that touchdown run was sensational, carrying like six guys into the end zone with him. He also saw five targets. That was the most he had seen since week six. So that is pretty exciting. Cowboys double digit favorites at home. 
again, we're we're adjusting what we think about Tony Pollard, the high end RB one. It feels like that's out of reach, but just just keep us in the top twenty four. Keep us in the top twenty four here, Tony. I am going to throw out maybe a surprising name because he has had it going in the last three weeks, but Tank Dell is the name oh, I'm going to bring man. up. And what I'm hungry for is a solidification of the hierarchy at wide receiver for Houston, who will have a huge opportunity down the stretch to potentially win you championships. I want to see him become the definitive easy choice in the Houston wide receiver room, the weekly target leader, that go-to receiver you're looking at. Um, he's been magma for three consecutive weeks. I don't want there to be any more doubt. And uh, he is in a very select group of rookie-wide receivers um, since 2014. There's only about seven of these guys that have had a 23-plus percent target per route run and 2.1 yard per route run. You know, you're talking Olave, Beckham, Jefferson, uh, and Tank Dell's in that group. I think we know what the capability is, but we've always had uh, Noah Brown is out and Nico Collins is out and yeah. Robert Woods is out. And so when everyone's there, I want uh, – and it's very possible, right? Like rookie wide receivers, they acclimate, they grow, they get better, they get more experience, the, the snap counts go up. I hope Tank Dell is having one of those second-half Beckham, second-half Jefferson type of seasons. Uh, it's certainly in the cards. And so, um, you know, pretty excited about week 15. You know, you, you get to play Tennessee. Could be a big – Big time performance. Uh, we shall see with Tank Dell. Very hungry, specifically yeah. this week as well. Yeah, I bet you are. Yeah, you. it it's very funny that there's just I don't know that I like I like Tank Dell a lot. You know, moving him up rookie ranks and everything, but there is still that there's that slight question of every single week. It seems like there's at least one wide receiver missing, and that will. Uh, I mean, that's good. it's just going to keep happening for the Texans right now. But it's it stopped me from that, like a full crowning of Tank Dell. He, he he probably deserves it, but there's just a couple variables. So I'm with you, Andy. That I want to see solidification, like remove all doubt that Tank Dell is in fact that dude. All right, I'm with you. So uh, that was hungry for more, presented by Uber Eats. Get almost almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Cornerbacks. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Baby back ribs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. Stock news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Uh, more useless Devon HN reports. Jeremy Fowler <laughs> saying him playing in week 12 would be, quote, a mild surprise. What are you talking about? <laughs> What 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 does this mean? If this is what it takes to be like a newsbreaker, yeah. oh, I'm I am in. in. I mean, look, I <laughs> According to sources, Devon A. Chan could play this week. He's allowed. To say it would be a mild surprise. Uh sorry, Jeremy. Um look, the the Dolphins play Salvin Ahmed on injured reserve. He has a foot injury. They signed Darrington Evans to the practice squad. And HN, uh, I don't think he's going to play on Friday. I mean, it seems like a, a dramatic. It seems like a tremendous risk for this team when you're playing the Jets and Tim Boyle, and you have greater. It has to factor in. You have to have greater aspirations for this team than winning on Friday against the Jets because you know you can do that without Devon HN. So do, that that's just called my logical conclusion. I could be completely wrong. He could respond super well in practice. It's Wednesday. You don't got a lot of time. So for me, I'm going to upgrade this. If Devon A. Chan plays in week 12, it will be a Spice. medium surprise. Oh, oh man. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought we were going Taco Bell seasoning. I thought you we were going up to spicy. Spicy surprise? Yeah. Sure. Sure, Mike. <laughs> uh, Darnell Anderson, Daryl Henderson, <laughs> they're all gone. Been waived. We Dude. talked about it. <laughs> look, if football I'm, is brutal. It's brutal, but at the same time, I I, I look at it the other side. Daryl Henderson was on a couch. His familiarity with the system and the depth chart. All of a sudden, he's a, he literally went from 
watching Netflix to starting a game where Zach Evans, Zach Evans was on this roster and didn't even get a whiff. That's so, why it's so brutal because Henderson is now looking at Zach Evans going, right. that guy? Yeah, Zach Evans that should guy? be the one that's cut. <laughs> like, you didn't want that guy. I came in and I bailed you out. I think you're developing that guy. Yeah. I think trust was a tough part. But um, right, Michael, and Th you, you trusted well, Anderson. Yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, we could debate it. Uh, Michael Thomas on IR with the knee injury, out at least four yeah. games. Uh, Grumpy Bill Belichick said he told all his quarterbacks to be ready. <laughs> I. That's not how it works, dude. I yeah. I mean, it's um. It's like when you tell all your kids you're my favorite. Right. You tell them in private. Uh, hey, just so you know. I love you the most. Now, he went to every quarterback on his roster individually. He said, you're starting this week. Get ready. But Well, I mean, by, by nature. Can I get some snaps, Mr. Bill? Can I was going to say, each, I practice? Each, each quarterback is one-third ready to play as a starter then. Uh, look, they're, they're, they're one of the worst teams in football. I was just looking at the standings yesterday, uh, top to bottom. I believe they're around the third pick in the draft right now. They're 2-8. and eight. Cardinals are 2-8, and eight, and Carolina's 1-9. and nine. So, man, you know, you're talking about in contention for a quarterback. Mm -hmm. If I were Bill, I'd pick the worst one. But that's the challenge. Right. It's hard to pick the worst. I think he's been doing a pretty good job at it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, they're in the third uh, the third spot yeah, right yeah. now. Got a surprise for you guys. They're all the worst. Yeah, yeah. That's my secret. <laughs> I want you all to try throwing with the opposite hand. All right, Kenneth Walker didn't practice. DK Metcalf didn't practice with a toe. Uh, more op I mean, we haven't heard any reason to believe he's not playing, but monitor that. Geno Smith limited with that elbow. So I, Seahawks I mean, injuries, this is the last we get to talk about it. Geno being limited is it's at least something. It's far better than him not. If, if Geno was a full did not practice, then you would say, oh, Geno has no chance to play. If he's lim And a reminder, he had no structural damage to his arm. Uh, specifically his elbow. It's all about pain and inflammation. So the, the way that Gino got back in the game, I'm uh, my hunch is he will play. I, will I, he be effective? I don't know. Yeah. If he starts the game against these 49ers, I am not confident he finishes this game yeah. against the 49ers. That was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. I got a drop for this segment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> love. Love the vocals on that one. Yeah. That was, that was also Jason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He does the voiceovers and the turkey. That's right. All right. So we, we have uh, how many? Five? Turkey Day Awards to hand out this year? Yes, sir. And you guys, uh, was it Kyle that selected these winners? Kyle and I both. We and and so together. Let me, let me just mm. say something at the top. We got five different awards to hand out, and we're going to try to guess who you've selected for each one. But I see at the top you're putting the MVP. Wouldn't that be the, wouldn't that be the last? Yeah, well, the players can only win one award each, and so some of these other ones coming up, you might think that, Oh, it made so sense to strategic. me to move it up. Okay. I bumped it up this year, and right. it, it's two players. So You're... this would be the uh, Thanksgiving meat? Yeah, turkey and, and ham. Oh, no, yeah. hmm. What about turducken? Whatever you like. <laughs> so this tofu? is the, the show... No, no tofu. No. <laughs> the showstopper and MVP thus far? Is that the way we're looking at it through yeah. through the season so far? Have, yeah, which two? which two players? Okay. All right, I got one's, mine too. One's easy. I think I, I, I feel I think like the two are easy. Yeah. Okay. So Christian McCaffrey is the easy. Christian one. McCaffrey. Well, and so Christian McCaffrey is definitely one of mine. Yeah. Oh, it's Tyreek. Tyreek Hill. Kills yeah. yeah that was yep. my We're second. unanimous yeah. here. Yeah. Tyreek and CMC. You got it. Okay. All right. Which one's the turkey? Which one's the ham? I think, I think Tyreek's the ham. Yeah, he does go ham. He goes ham yeah. out there on that field. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Tiffany's mashed potatoes award. This is Jason's wife, who is famous for her. A rich, buttery glob of mashed potatoes. <laughs> what everybody needs to add a little body to the plate. So it's the most consistent and dependable dish for a Thanksgiving feast. Last year's winner was Nick Chubb. Hashtag Thanksgiving from last year. Yeah, no one was more consistent than Nick Chubb. 
now I understand why you put the MVP at the top because yeah. we would be tempted to just go straight to the dependable Christian McCaffrey. Yes, sir. Um, so Kyle was a part of the awards. Yes. Oh okay. God. So you think of Keenan. I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, Kyle will take any chance to put Keenan Allen and give him an award. So that will be my answer. Oh, uh, that's probably right. But he hasn't been as consistent as it doesn't Jalen matter. Hurts. <laughs> yeah, you're 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 playing next level games yeah. here. I'm gonna go with Jalen Hurts, who I think has been. Uh, extremely consistent. After week one, he's just put up solid numbers every single week. Uh, I'm gonna go with Mike. I'm gonna go with the <laughs> Ke- I'm gonna go with the Keenan Allen selection. What do we What do we got here? All right, guys. There's a wide out that's been even more consistent oh, than I'm Keenan this Ross? year. Oh, AJ uh, Brown. I'm on Ross St. Brown. Uh, yeah, that, that is actually the yeah. right pick. It is. That is good that for is you, great. Kyle. And you know it is if Kyle's picking him over yes. Keenan. Oh man, that's what Kyle happened. hates on well, Ke- Ross. Kyle needs to be able to hand the baton to his next. Gi- it will not be Amon Ra. He will refuse to do it. Well, when Keenan leaves, yeah, he, he won't is, be the new. He has been an anti Amon Ra. Yeah. Saint Brown. Guy. He still thinks he's a bad player. That's he pretty bad. That's a pretty bad. Day. That's a pretty bad take. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty <laughs> untrustworthy. Yeah, Amon Ra. A- Kyle's on the microphone. He's just too too. He's chicken. probably dying right now, just laughing. Kyle, uh, any any rebuttals? Keenan was an honorable mention, but yeah. I put Amon Ra as the right answer. Okay. Okay. He's had a single game outside the top 19 wideouts. He's he- double digits every time he's played. Yeah. All right. The next award is the burn dinner rolls. So oh, uh, the description here says, gosh, you put so much time and effort into preparing the meal, but unexpectedly you burn the rolls. Sometimes you just have to scrape the carbon shavings off and throw it away in sadness. Hmm. Um, so does that mean it's the disappointment? Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you look at last year's winner, Russell Wilson. Yeah, I think that gives you a good, clear idea of who's been disgusting. I who's ruined. I think, I think there's a, uh, several names that can certainly. Cer- but I, I'm wondering if if I'm I'm wondering if Tony Pollard is the name. That was there's, the name that comes to the, my mind first. There's three names for me. One of them isn't fair. Cooper Cup really feels like a burnt no, down. No. Obviously, injury. I don't think they'd select yeah. him. So to me, it's is it Tony Pollard or is it Najee Harris or is it Trevor Lawrence? Oh. Yeah, they all apply. Najee's a good answer, too. Yeah, although uh, Najee... Uh, I'm going to go Pollard. That's my final answer. That's my guess. He was who I wrote down first, yeah, so I'll, I'll go, go Pollard, Pollard as well. All right, who's the winner? He was drafted a little bit later, but we went with Miles Sanders. Oh, uh, gosh. Okay. Yeah, he's been <laughs> he's, pretty useless. It's such a burnt roll that I didn't even think no, about. No, that's, yeah. that's... He was you, drafted real high. He's you got a, remember, a single game with 10 fantasy yeah, points. Yeah. We remembered that those rolls were in the oven on Friday. Yeah. This was like, oh, okay, that's... Whoops. <laughs> it's fair. Uh, that's a good pick. Uh, the Sweet Potato Casserole Award... This is the heavy, hearty, delicious for the first few bites, uh, but you can only have so much, and it makes you vomit all over the place and ruins Thanksgiving. Oh, I got mine for Jason's sure. Jason's fired up. Yeah, so this I mean, is what what is what is this? The starts strong, then disappears. Mine is Gabe Davis. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he was so okay. delicious to yeah. start the year. Touchdown every single week, and it makes you want to play him. And then, oh, you eat too much of that, you're gonna be thrown up. All Dude. right, that, I mean that's a good pick. I'm trying to think of these. Fantasy finishes in that first week. The that's a Gabe Davis is a great answer. I was also thinking Bijan because it came out so strong. It was lock. We're done. We did it, everyone. Bijan is who we want him to be. Here's a, here's a little hint for you. Okay, the player that I that we chose as the winner was, was the tight end. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh my was, gosh! They finished first and second at the position. Oh. In the first two weeks, Hunter and then Henry disappeared. Yeah, that's that's who I went with. For Hunter, yeah, that makes really? sense. Yeah, yeah. Hunter Henry had a that, that two week run. We were all we all got tricked. Okay, so that's the that was the answer. Yeah, and okay. I mean, <laughs> we had here's a hint. It was Hunter Henry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Um. All right. the The final award, the Mike Wright Special, the Jack in the Box Award, mm. the Random Dish, delicious. That somebody brought because, well, they're convinced that Thanksgiving food is trash and outdated. Um, and it's time to stop with the old way of thinking. Open up your eyes. Realize this could be the best thing ever because, of course, Mike turns to Jack in the Box on Thanksgiving Day. Certainly. He is famous for the, uh, you know, you're alone in that drive through I'm guessing. <laughs> no, I am not. No, Bro, you're not. No, you're not. It's Jack in the Box. It's delicious. 
So last year's winner was Justin Fields. So this yeah. is kind of like what the emerging. I I got my answer. Oh, that's funny because my my initial thing of the random dish that you know is is out there was Adam Thielen, but that feels like the exact no, opposite. It's new hotness. It's new hotness, and I'm gonna go Tank Dell. Yeah, that's not a bad answer. Um, I'm gonna go Puka. It's yeah. possible. I like Puka better. <laughs> I'm going Puka. Okay. All right, what do we got? It's Puka. Oh! oh, there we go. I feel very lucky to have gotten that one. I right. forgot that Kyle also has Puka on the Dino team. You're just trying to reverse engineer yes. these yes, awards, of course, because I know Kyle. But it didn't work. Like you got no. you got them both wrong when you did that. Yeah, well, I was Kyle's above board, is what I'm saying. No, it was, that was the last <laughs> one was an oversight on me. Okay, all right. Um. What do we have a few? We got the Foot Clan has submitted a few bonus Thanksgiving food player comparisons. Yeah, I like over these. on uh, Twitter. Jonathan said Keenan is the delicious gravy. So, um, you know, if you got dry turkey or under season stuffing, um, in you know, you could you could pour a little gravy yeah, on top can. and save the day. Keenan is delicious. Uh, this one's good. Uh, Park says MVS is the relative you have. Um, really low expectations for so you ask them to do something simple like bring paper plates and they still forget yeah did you realize oh man we're dunking on mbs we should yeah. that's what i was gonna say mbs is the third highest played player on the entire kansas city chiefs Ooh. offense that's the problem uh, you want to yeah. hold somebody accountable for drops there's not another wide receiver making le more than a million bucks and he's making eight million dollars in year six and he can't catch. And it's not just that. You got to make yourself the guy if you're getting paid that much. He's been a huge disappointment. Where where does 8 million doesn't sound like very much? Well, compared, uh, compared to, to his 1 teammates. million. Well, I know, well comparing it to the teammates, that's also that's a Kansas City problem. It was a mistake. It yeah. was a Kansas City mistake. Yes. The amount of uh, he's a cardio king. I mean, yeah. he's out there doing he's out there for snaps doing nothing. All right. So I agree. He didn't bring the paper plates. And then uh, Ben Mine says Bijan's the turkey. Can be the star of the feast, but when you have someone who doesn't know how to cook uh, it properly, mm. it's dry and disappointing. That's perfect. Yep. Thank you, Arthur. Let's get a new chef in town. Oh, gosh. Arthur just carving the turkey at my Thanksgiving. <laughs> he would do some weird stuff. Oh, he's carving right through Number the bone two. and serving pieces of bone. Oh, we that. updated the graphic. Oh, let me see that. I missed it. Do it again. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, was I mean, that flies around him? It was. Because he stinks. That's right. Like doo-doo. Uh, and, and, you know, it's encouraging that he'll be part of the fantasy football community for now in probably yeah. two years. Got to have did, a villain. I, I'm just throwing it out there. He did shave his mustache and gave Bijan exactly what we dreamed of. The mustache is back, though. You know he grew it back. Well, then, I mean, TBD. <laughs> TBD this week. But I am still hopeful that uh, Bijan is going to get that utilization that he got last game. Okay. All right. Are we jumping into Thanksgiving matchups, Brooksy? Let's go. Oh, boy. It's going to be really fun, Jason. Mm. Green Bay, Detroit. Games in Detroit. The DK Sportsbook line, Detroit minus 7.5. The over-under is 47. Kyle, do you know if this line opened uh, smaller or has it been here the whole time? It's been bet up a little bit. Okay. Well, we've had some injury news on the Green Bay Packers. Um, they're 4-6 and six right now. They're going into Detroit. Uh where Detroit, you know, they play every Thanksgiving. But, you know, at home they're averaging 30 points a game, heavy favorites. Aaron Jones not expected to play. We got news that Jaden Reed's dealing with a chest injury. Um, in, in fact, Michael Ford came out and said he came in on Tuesday and felt like it was a problem. That's not great. Yeah. How big of a problem? Like, is, Yeah, I had to change my he, lineup gonna, as well. Is he going to play? Yeah, I mean, we've got a uh, fantasy faceoff later and um, – yeah, so I, I was looking into this this morning because he was in my uh, D DK lineup. He got injured in the game, was able to play through it, came in Tuesday, said that, you know, it's it's a, it's a new problem. He is not participating in practice right now. Mm. The Packers are extraordinarily banged up. As of Tuesday, uh, the Packers have 17 players, 16 active, uh, on the injury report. That is not great Luke? and if you aren't used to looking at injury reports that is not how they usually look luke musgrave has a um an issue abdomen issue didn't practice was in the hospital we're hearing lacerated kidney ouch kidney or spleen 
Kidney. Kidney? Hey. Okay. Would it have made a difference to how you reacted to the Yeah, injury? what do you think about Are you a the, real, like... Like, is which one's better? Guys, I, we don't have enough time to get into the spleen <laughs> kidney debate right okay. now. Let's this move is, it along. I know it's a passion of yours. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, Oregon man. I've, I've I've done some deep diving on spleens. What does the spleen do? Again, we we just we don't okay. have the time to get into it right now. Otherwise, right. he would. Look, uh, I know what it does. Okay, <laughs> but I can't tell you right now. Yeah, later. Um, it, you know, it, it's possible that there is a consolidation of target situation though, where you know it's been hard to start Romeo Dobbs. It's been hard to start Christian Watson. Hard to impossible. But if Jaden Reed isn't there, if Luke Musgrave isn't there, Dontavian Wicks, who's been getting targets, didn't practice due yeah. to concussion. So, like, in some ways, it simplifies the fantasy football decisions, I think, where, like, I think A.J. Dillon, Christian Watson, and Romeo Dobbs are flex-worthy players in this matchup. Yeah, Rome Romeo Dobbs has been a top player. 24 wide receiver in five of 11 games he is doing i'm he, get he's the nfc's Cortland sutton yes. for sure yes yeah I, but the target volume is is very low but i don't six two two oh four apparently that's what jordan love is going four for. touchdowns in five games yeah i mean he, he's 42 percent of his fantasy points come from touchdowns <laughs> that is an insanely <laughs> high number super and, sustainable and not sustainable not a sticky stat so you you know He's averaging 39 receiving yards a game. I do understand if, if Jaden Reed doesn't play, and it definitely seems like Dontavian Wicks won't clear concussion protocol right. uh, by Thursday. So a consolidation of targets and Luke Musgrave probably not being there either. I agree with Andy. It makes it a little bit easier to play both Watson and Dobbs. Um, going forward when these other players come back, I do think you should be a little bit more hesitant to rely on the touchdowns from Dobbs. Dobbs, just a quick reminder, versus Detroit in week four, had 13 targets. He was 9 for 95. I think this week is good for him. Yeah. And uh, we're all rooting for your team to win, Mike, in our big league. So all right. You got well, Dobbs out there. Yep. Uh, Jared Goff at home It's normally pretty good. And you've got Jamison Williams coming on of late. More snaps, more opportunities. You know, for him, it's uh, he's a one-touch guy. One-touch. Mm -hmm. And the snap count's going up. You love to see it. And hopefully we get a little bit more this week. But Amon Raza Lock, Gibbs and Montgomery. I, ha I was talking to some people yesterday. They asked what to expect from Gibbs. Expect great things every week. Yeah. And, and if you're wondering, well, then what do we expect from David Montgomery? I personally would expect great things every week. Yeah, Gibbs is the RB1 in fantasy points per game since week seven of the year. Thank Bo goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both players should be started. If you had both on your roster, I would start both on your roster. The matchup against Green Bay is a very good one. You're at home. You're seven and a half point favorites. Put them in your lineup. Well, let's talk about Sam Laporta for a second because it was a really wonderful eight weeks to start the year. Um, it's the first time he's had two dud games in a row. You know, three for 18 was his first like true bad game, and then four for 40 the week before with no touchdown. Uh, any any loss of confidence? Like, would you – I think the big question would be, like, Njoku versus Laporta. And that's one where Njoku, I would I would choose him. Yeah, I, I definitely think there are other options you can play. Um, Njoku's a, a great option. Um, we'll, we'll talk here in another uh, Thursday matchup about Logan Thomas. I, I think I would maybe go that direction. But I'm not I haven't lost confidence in Laporta to the tune of like moving on at all. He still had five targets each of the last two games. And honestly, Jared Goff just had a really bad game last week. Just so. ebbs and flows of, of yeah. being a tight end. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, quick break, back with another Thursday Thanksgiving matchup. You know, honestly, if we want to spend the rest of the Megalodon just talking about this game, I'm cool with that. <laughs> this game and is I'll going to... And I'll stare at you the whole time, this Jason. This game is going to crush my soul. Um, And by this game, I mean the Dak CD stack. The Washington Commanders at 4-7 and seven take on the 7-3 and three Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Dallas is just mere 12.5-point home favorites. Oh, my. The over-under is 49! Oh, my. That's uh, almost 31 points for the Cowboys. 
uh, it opened at minus 10 and it's gone up. It makes sense because the commanders have gone down. Um, Do you want to know what the Dallas Cowboys are averaging at home this year, Jason? Points wise? No, I don't. 40. Didn't, 40 points. Didn't want to know it. 73 plays I, per I game. I told you I didn't want to know. Uh, they've hit their implied total every single time. Oh, sweet. I am so thankful for this matchup. You know, Dak, I bet Mike's going to talk about him later. You're darn right I am. Uh, he's been on fire. I mean, I'm I'm leaning on Dak the rest of the season. Uh, Sam Howell and company, they just chuck it and try to stay in these games, but their defense, their defense was so bad that Tommy DeVito looked real good last week. Yeah. That's not that's not good. My my only hope here in surviving is the Dallas Cowboys start the game with three pick sixes. <laughs> it's possible. But even if that happens, and the reason why I think we are right to be extremely bullish on the DAC C D stack is because it's this divisional matchup. It's similar to what we just saw a couple weeks ago. In division against the Giants, um, they were trouncing the Giants and they just kept throwing the ball. Oh, I loved it. They just yeah. they said you know foot on the neck we're gonna step down yeah. hard this is a divisional opponent we want to embarrass them we want to establish our dominance this isn't a, a, a kindness where we're gonna run the clock out and I think they're gonna do the same darn thing here I have my I don't I don't think I've done have I done a touchdown guarantee at all this year uh, uh, I, think I think early one. maybe did, one yeah did it work I did, yes you did hit it I've got a second Brandon Cooks scores in this game Okay. Well, wow, there's a lock in his DraftKings lineup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brandon Cooks, you're you're always paying attention yeah. to that. Yeah. Well, tell me I'm wrong. Well, look, it, it all works together, Jason. I know. I'm I supposed get it. to be, you know, very transparent on this show. Brandon Cooks is, you know, Darius Slayton eviscerated the Washington secondary with Tommy DeVito last week. Brandon Cooks is getting more. Uh, I, I like what I'm seeing uh, on the field from Brandon Cooks. Seventy-two percent of snaps last week. He's going to get a deep chance here. I think he scores. That's my touchdown guarantee. What do we do with the current quarterback four on the season? Are you Sam Howell? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, the, it's not a good matchup. He is the quarterback four. It's not a good matchup, but because of the game script, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I think you could be. It could be forty to fourteen, and I'd be fine with it because it's you know. He it's might just, have 350 so yards. One of the, I'll give you some options. Okay. So Sam Howell or Baker Mayfield against the Colts. Baker. Gardner against the Bucks. Gardner. No, I'll take Howell on that one. Okay. And Trevor Lawrence against Houston. Uh, I'll, I'll take Trevor. Trevor. I, I, I am right. a little bit more concerned about Sam Howell. He's been airing it out. He runs. He'll, he'll, he'll probably be okay. They're going to need him to drop back to pass so much that it is all right. But the one thing I'll point out is like I don't know that he's had a single tough opponent this season. Maybe week three against Buffalo when before their defense got just devastated by injury as the season went along. They started the year as a really good defense and then they lost all their defense. But outside of that, I mean, early Denver was terrible. Arizona is terrible. The Philly passing defense has been bad all year. Chicago, Atlanta, the Giants, Philly, here's Seattle. Like they, ha he has not been tested at all. And and in that week three matchup against Buffalo, that's where he scored zero fantasy points. So just just to lay it out there, the last seven games played, Sam Howell is on a seventeen game pace of over five thousand yards passing, thirty four. Touchdowns, 17 interceptions, 733 passing attempts, and 65 sacks. Um, yeah. Play your Dallas You've got defense. your touchdown guarantee. I'm going to make my interception guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Howell right. will throw at least two interceptions in this game. Uh, Brian Robinson still a must start. It's not a good matchup, but he is so involved. And Gibson's still been limited. You know Brian Robinson's a running back four in the year? Yeah, his spike games have been very spiky. But he's he's leveled out a little bit. Yeah, recently because of the passing work, um, the last two weeks, six receptions, seven receptions, that gives you a baseline that we just didn't expect with Brian Robinson to be utilized in the passing game that much. But it's like you said, Mike, Antonio Gibson has been banged mm -hmm. up. He missed last game. He's still limited in practice right now. No, no word on whether he'll play in this one. But I think Brian Robinson... Even though it is, you know, against a good Dallas defense, 
I think he's a really good play this week. Terry McLaurin has been extremely disappointing the last two weeks in particular. And then on the course of the year, he only has one tw top 12 finish, despite all those yards. Like you would think if your quarterback's throwing for a 5,000-yard pace and you're throwing the ball 700-plus times a year that you might. Two touchdowns on the course of the season for Terry McLaurin. That's that's the That's the, the story. Issue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dotson? No. Not sin this no. week. Um, Logan Thomas, eight targets last week. Yeah. Would you play yeah, him? It's yeah, it's fine. Jake Ferguson, last week he had a touchdown uh, taken away by the Schoon Man. Jason is sitting here praying that he mitigates some of my DAC. Yes, with Fergie. Uh, some of your CD with with uh, Fergie. If the touchdowns go Ferg's way, I will be ecstatic. Ferguson's a good play. Okay. Uh, Michael Gallup, eh. Pre don't think about that. No. <clears throat> nope. All right. Anybody else in this game you want nope. to talk about? Moving on. San Francisco. Thanksgiving Day game, seven and three, going to Seattle. Six and four Seahawks at home, and the 49ers are seven point road favorites. The over under is forty four. It's gone up. It's been bet up a little bit, according to the DK Sportsbook, and um, the winner takes control of that division. It's a big game. What are your expectations here for fantasy? Uh, for fantasy purposes, pretty easy on the San Francisco side. Purdy absolutely is in. McCaffrey, currently the MVP of fantasy. Ayuk, sensational. <laughs> I can just list everyone on this team, and the answer is, am I going to play them? Yes. So, move, yeah, the Pur moving on. All, all the 49ers for They're sure. In. Uh, Charbonnet is going to get the start for the Seattle Seahawks. It is a, a matchup against the 11th ranked run defense over the last six weeks for fantasy purposes. I'm very comfortable starting Charbonnet this week. I, I don't have any concerns just because the involvement is going to be huge. Yeah. yeah, and he he should get passing work, six targets the past week. The The question up in the air is, will it be Geno Smith or will Mr. Irresponsible, a.k.a. Drew Locke, be making – uh, an appearance or a start that would be a big problem it it definitely is a downgrade for the offense but for Charbonnet I don't know, maybe Drew Locke just panics and throws him the ball all the time would you stay in the flames with Jalen Warren this week who takes on Cincinnati over Charbonnet Ooh. I think I probably would yeah yeah he, he's getting enough utilization and, and Cincinnati's defense Hasn't been great against running backs, so I would I would lean slightly towards the Jalen Warren side. But I agree, Charbonnet is still a good play. Uh, James Conner against the Rams or Charbonnet? Conner. I would go Charbonnet there. I'd go Conner. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. One thing I did notice, and it's worth paying attention to, if Drew Locke's a starter, he wasn't being successful in these attempts, but he was he's doing that whole backup thing where he was targeting JSN a lot. So if if Metcalf is, is hurt or banged up, maybe you have more confidence. I mean Lockett's been banged up. Metcalf's been banged up. I yeah. mean it's it's made it a little messy in the you know 49ers have given up a lot of fantasy points to wideouts over the last six weeks. They just lost um uh who did Rashad White just um, juke into an ACL injury? Uh Tafunga? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I mean that hurts so, you know, are you comfortable with all three? I, 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 so my expectations here are are based upon worries at the quarterback position. If Geno starts, I worry how good he will be, how healthy, you know, is he going to be able to throw the way that he wants mm, to against I a really good. The exact same worries about Drew Locke. <laughs> right. So my point is I'm not excited, even though it is not a – bad matchup for wide receivers against the San Francisco 49ers. I worry with the quarterback position. Um, all three are start to bowl. All three have worries. Okay. We good with that one? Mm -hmm. All right. We do have a Black Friday game this week, and um, you can take about, uh, you know, Black Friday discount, 20% off the total points. Is that what yeah. we're doing? Yeah. Miami 7-3. and three. The Jets are 4-6. and six. The DraftKings Sportsbook has Miami as 10-point road favorites. The over-under is just 41. So here we are again, Jets defense trying to 
do everything for uh, and not going to be able to. I mean, they, they just aren't going to be able to hold up, I think. Tim Boyle's getting the start. Okay. I would be I would be nervous about Tua because, like, if I had, like, the Howell decision and Tua, those are close. Um, I mean, the Jets have not given up a lot of fantasy points to, to the passing game. Uh, you can run on them pretty well, and the, and the Dolphins are a great running team. So it kind of does line up where you say, okay, well, they're going to have more success on the ground. And then because they're going to have success on the ground, they're going to keep the groundwork going. And it's very difficult to throw on the Jets. They've got such good cornerbacks. Um, it, yeah, I, I would agree with you. Tua is, to T me, a streaming option. You need to look at, see who else is, you know, on your roster that you might be able to start over. Kyler. To. I'd play Kyler. Oh, for sure. I mean, Tua, Tua really hasn't been that good for fantasy in a while. He he was the quarterback 22, 9, 15, and 12. That's kind of the bottom of what you'd want. Um, think, always has the chance to explode. Like, unfortunately, in two weeks, he plays Washington. Yeah. And I say yeah. unfortunately, not because of – not for those of you with Tua, but because <laughs> Papa Josh has Tua against me. Fair enough. I think there's a handful of people that are pretty easy starts over him, Goff, Fields. Uh, I would start Brock Purdy over him, Kyler. What about – I've got two names, though, that are – questionable would you start Trevor Lawrence off his one good game in a good matchup against Houston or Tua I'd I'd I'd, 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 I'd play I'd, I'd play Trevor Lawrence I uh, would as well uh man but I wouldn't tell anybody about it <laughs> and then yeah I lean I keep it I secret Lawrence. and the spicier question do you have the gumption the stones to throw Joshua Dobbs in there against Chicago you bet I don't no? No. He's been pretty good for fantasy. Yeah, he runs and keeps getting rushing touchdowns. I mean, this is we have we have been here. We've seen the movie. We did it with Arizona. And it was true. Sometimes he was kind of good. Okay. And so you sometimes go to a, that's the risk the line. is so much higher with Dobbs. And I think I think Tua always has Tyreek for the big play. Always has Waddle for the big play. Yeah, I would go Tua over Dobbs. Now being the first Black Friday game. What are we thinking? Are we just going for younger players with better metabolisms to get over the Thanksgiving meal oh, from man. the day before? Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, this is the it, first time ever. That there's no right. gap. They're, 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 they, these guys are having Thanksgiving Hashtag on Thanksgiving. Fat Friday. <laughs> fat Friday. So it's like, you know, Brees is young. Is that is his, He's going to be fully recovered from that meal? Brr, I don't know. Do running backs put it back pretty good? I mean, they. I, yeah, I, I bet Brees Hall can get after it. His offensive line is beat up. And yeah. it's a terrible match. You're playing Brees Hall. But you're not expecting big things. No, I'm not. I Casey. mean, you want to talk about stack in the box. Tim Boyle, please throw on us. Yes. We're just going to do everything yeah. to stop Brees Hall, which is why he is rushing for like two yards a carry. He can't do anything when he gets the ball handed he's, to him. He's Hopefully pretty much, he's really involved in the passing game. He's living the Saquon life. He's, yeah. That yeah, good, yeah. he's that good that you're never sitting him. He's kind of... He's he's had some big performances, but you're just hoping he catches some passes and ha breaks a couple big runs. Like I at least he can, right? He's not a plotter, right? He's a guy that he could he could average one a carry fifteen times and then have a seventy two yard run and your day's done. Yeah. So you play him. The real nervousness, and I've had this question a ton over on Twitter, is around Garrett Wilson. When you saw what happened last week, when you now know. That zero is a possibility. Mm. You have mm -hmm. a new quarterback. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, negative Thank points you. is a possibility. You have a new quarterback. You have He's been banged up. And Jalen Ramsey and company, they're looking pretty good on the on that side of the ball at this point. I'd be, real, I'd be actively comfortable playing somebody else. Well, I don't even know if that's a phrase that makes any sense, Brooks. Yeah, no, I, I, we got it. What do you mean so, by that? Yeah, um, I, I we don't have time to explain it. <laughs> Otherwise, I would. So yeah. let's say it would be like a mild surprise to you if uh, if Garrett Wilson scores more than than eleven fantasy points, it would be a spicy surprise. So let's say, so give me some names. Uh, Hollywood Brown against the Rams. Well, Mike, that's good. That's a good question. I would, I would, I'd try Hollywood on for size. Really, uh, Chris Godwin against the Colts. I'd play Godwin. All right, and then last one I'll give you Deontay Johnson with a brand new offensive Man, okay, coordinator. Okay, hold on. Let's 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 rewind the tape for a second. Okay. How in the ear of Tim Boyle has Garrett Wilson been? 
what we know is that from the past when Zach Wilson hasn't played, whoever comes in has targeted Garrett Wilson a ton. And Garrett Wilson has been better with whether it was Joe Flacco or White, whoever has been at quarterback, they have succeeded with Garrett Wilson. His his highest fantasy finish on the year is 15. It's two weeks ago. He hasn't scored since week two. The matchup's a little tough. Tim Boyle is not the answer at quarterback. Like it, it, he is. He might be worse than Zach Wilson. Do you have any worries? But, yeah, go ahead. I said, but these other quarterbacks that Jason's mentioning, I think the success comes up. Like Zach Wilson, more just not willing to throw. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I know that Garrett Wilson is still getting a whole bunch of targets. I I I recognize that, but there's just times where he's where where other quarterbacks are anticipating that he's going to be open or they're just like no this is a good 50 50 spot for him and so i i'm still okay playing garrett wilson um i think he would have popped up as questionable so i'm not sure we, we should also check on the health I'll, I'll take it back the godwin one okay godwin's had no ceiling I'll, I'll play garrett wilson there i'll probably play garrett wilson over hollywood too yeah I'm, I'm because i'm gonna sit there and i'm gonna say what what if I'm going to sit there and go, what if it's the Flacco situation like yeah. you brought up? Yeah, uh, Garrett Wilson, limited participant on Tuesday with an elbow. In yeah, it. yeah, I'm rewinding the tape. Okay. I'm changing. Um, that's the end of the Jets. It's Hall and Wilson. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I, I guess I'm just curious what you think the run game is going to look like. Mostert so, is a must start. Yes. Uh, but we, we do have a quote here, uh, Mike McDaniel, talking about Jeff Wilson. The quote is, Jeff is ready, fully healthy, and I'm ready for the people's champ to get some action. Well, that says Devon Achan is not playing. <laughs> I mean, that's that's if he's talking about that, the people's champ, Jason. Yeah, that, it sounds a little patronizing. You just benched the dude. <laughs> he gave him a week off. I guess. So Achan also will practice today, and how much, if at all, he'll play Friday will be determined during that practice. I'm just still waiting for some real Achan news. <laughs> it's coming we'll, up. We'll retweet something valuable at some point and uh, hopefully get you some more information. But Mostert is comfortable. Wilson would be a dart throw. Maybe yeah, a little bit more I, than a dart I, throw. I, th I think Wilson might be a very good play this week. If if it's just Mostert and Wilson, we have seen those yeah. two succeed for fantasy. The matchup against the Jets is, you know, you're going to beat them on the ground. You're a, a very significant favorite. I, I think Jeff Wilson, who was healthy last week, it was, you know, it was made a big deal. He was healthy scratch, but that means – this isn't him coming back from injury. No, no. So and I, you had, you, he just hasn't looked. Uh, we I haven't agree. got. We haven't got very many looks at him. I guess. And just game script wise, it wouldn't surprise if in the fourth quarter the Dolphins are up. It's put away multiple scores, yeah. and yep. they're like, "Hey, Raheem, go rest your old body, and we're going to put Jeff Wilson in." <laughs> That's what they'd say. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my wife tells me on Friday after Thanksgiving. <laughs> Andy, go rest your old body. You have eaten too much. Um. And I will I will say this. Take your Thursday and Friday players out of the flex. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and one of the things that's really re – it's more important this week than ever before because this show is a Megalodon show coming out on Wednesday, which means you have player news coming out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you need flexibility. There are situations on my roster right now where, like, we don't know – unless somebody in this studio knows something I don't. I don't know what Damian Pierce is doing this week. I don't know if that means Devin Singletary is a must start or not. Like there are a lot of up in the air situations, so please don't make that mistake. Take them out of your flex, put them into their running back, wide receiver positions, and make sure that you can make some pivots. And you know what? You're going to have more information. Jason and I were talking about this. Jason has the players one on Thursday, one on Friday. I've got two on Thursday. We're going to go into Sunday with some more information. I'm going to have a lead. He's going to have a lead. Whatever the case may be. You've got that DAC CD stack, and if they go nuclear – the way that they could. I, I might be throwing Gabe Davis into my lineup just because he's the type of player that can bring fire if I get lucky. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, we don't know what's going on with Justin Jefferson. Al's bringing that up right now. Like, that's a that's a question mark this week. So, please make sure you do that. A little bit of an advantage. Um, Brooksy, what's next? Next, start of the week. All right, let's do it. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. All right, some confidence picks this week. 
I tried to go for th- at least three out of my four. I tried. Oh, look at you! <laughs> you let me know if you need some underpants. I okay, okay. I might need them. I got three three different pairs. Okay, I'll let you know which <laughs> which set I need. I tried to go a little deeper this week. I, w- I want to make sure that we're giving you some non obvious uh, insight, and it starts with the quarterback start of the week. I'm going to go Derek Carr okay. slash Jameis Winston. Uh, whoever it is, Atlanta is the worst right now against opposing quarterbacks. And when you look at where the Saints are in their season, the weapons that they have in Olave, in Shahid, Juwan Johnson, keep him on your radar right now. With Michael Thomas going out, it clears up some of the target situation and Taysom Hill and company. So um, we talked about it on the streaming segment yesterday. Will Levis was the QB6 against Atlanta. Joshua Dobbs is the QB5 against Atlanta. Kyler Murray was the QB6 against Atlanta. I think Derek Carr is going to play. That's just my gut right now. But if he doesn't, I'm still comfortable with Winston as a wild man streamer with, uh, I don't know, your second tier of underpants. Oh, is that Winston, we need? Winston needs a second tier. You got it. Titanium underpants. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love that. You got it. Coming up. <laughs> Titanium one, underpants. One hot pair. <laughs> titanium undies. Order of titanium undies, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, for quarterback start of the week, uh, I'm going with Brock Purdy, who I've got as my quarterback six this week. There's basically the super, superstars, your, your Mahomes and Hurts and guys ahead of him. And otherwise, I'm going to stay in the flames with Purdy. He's been on fire right now. He's leading the NFL in QBR, in passer rating, in expected points per pass attempt. And teams are throwing on Seattle at the fifth highest rate in the NFL, 37.4 passing attempts per game. There are people that probably should have been starting Purdy and Hal as locks all season long instead of, you know, whatever it was, Mm -hmm. Winston and Lawrence Mm -hmm. and some of these guys that they thought were auto starts. Yeah, I mean, even, you know, we talked about Tua and his poor matchup. Or There's a lot of players you might have, even good players like Justin Fields, where it's like Brock Purdy's just getting it done. Uh, And as a touchdown favorite on Thanksgiving evening, you get to relax with a full belly feeling pretty good about your prospects. Okay. And my QB start of the week. What? Purdy. Oh, oh, no, no, no. We sorry. don't. We don't yeah, no, it. we heard it. We just <laughs> moving past it. Uh, it's it's Dak Prescott. Uh, we've already laid out the entire case for Dak Prescott. So is this a case? Uh, this is a case for number one on the week. This is a case for number one, and he's just it. He was my sleeper, so I'm just like <laughs> taking this opportunity here to say we've praised you, Mike. We've Dak, already praised you tremendously. I need more. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, moving on, running backs. Yeah. All right, uh, this is this is the only one that's kind of more of a layup. But I look, the Jets are thirtieth against the run. Uh, they're allowing the thirty the third most rushing yards per game. So Raheem Mostert's my start of the week on Black Friday. Um, you know, it looked like maybe the season was starting to turn towards, you know, the the beginning half of the year. Mostert couldn't win you a championship. Suddenly things have been kind of cleared up a little bit, and I don't I don't think Mostert is going to get less than than 60% of the work rest of the season. So even when the A-chan comes back, they're going to have to manage him a little bit. Uh, Mostert is set up against the Jets on Black Friday to be kind of a weak winning guy, not just a run-of-the-mill 10-pointer. Mm-hmm. No, I would agree. Um, at running back, I've got Rashad White against the Indianapolis Colts. We've made a living this year on thinking that the Indianapolis Colts games are going to hit the over they usually have. And Rashad White's just been, I mean, he's an absolute every week volume play, averaging 18 and a half opportunities per game on pace for 70 plus receptions. He's the running back seven, even though he only has five total touchdowns this season. But the Colts are giving up a ton of touchdowns, 15 rushing touchdowns. That's tied for third most in the NFL. Since week four, they are dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points given up to the running back position. So this is just a complete smash play I think uh, DFS lineups if you've got him anywhere he should be fantastic this week I tried so hard to get Rashad White to play against you this week Jason oh well because this Indianapolis matchup I think Rashad White has the potential to be the best running back of the week he could uh Mike who do you have um, oh boy it's Yeti time Derrick Henry which it has been uh 
unpleasant. Here's uh, this makes me so nervous. This this is his uh, fantasy finish in points the past couple weeks. Week ten, two and a half points. The following week, we did improve, but four point nine. The biggest key in that is tougher matchups, and that got blown out. the The Tennessee Titans, like, unfortunately, Derrick Henry is now at the point of you have to pay attention to matchup. You have to pay attention to are they favorites? Because Spear, when when they're losing, Spears is going to be on the field a ton. We will get an update on uh, whether or not it's snowing in Vermont, but it's just the Panthers, thirty first in schedule adjusted points and. They're three and a half point favorites right now. So I'm rolling Derrick Henry out with confidence. Okay. Brandon Cooks, my start of the week at the wide receiver position. My touchdown guarantee. The boom game's on the way. Your and DraftKings wide receiver. We, I don't know that. Uh, <laughs> Washington, dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. And they're giving up like 16.9 yards per reception. That's crazy. Um, CD Lamb draws the coverage. Brandon Cooks brings the boom. And it's happening on Thanksgiving. You'll be cooking. That makes sense. At wide receiver, I'm going with the city. Pity City Michael Pittman Jr. Build it. Do we have that? Over? We <laughs> mm -hmm. On the season, he has a 30% target share. He's the dude there. Since week six, he's averaging 13.5 fantasy points per game, 10 targets a game, 76 receiving yards per game. And I talked about it, the Colts. The Colts home games, they're averaging 57 combined points. That's number one in the NFL. And Tampa Bay is a great matchup for wide receivers. They're allowing the third highest yards per attempt. They rank 29th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. You can't run on them easily. You can throw on them easily. Pity City, a great play this week. And I'm going with Zay Flowers against the Chargers. I like it. On Sunday night. I love it. It oh want some more of it? I do. I want a little bit more of it. It's it's been rough here after the explosion of week one, the the target surprise. And why talk about week one? Well, Mark Andrews was not there. Ten targets, nine for seventy eight. He was the number one read of the offense. Think we have a great chance that it goes back to that. The other Ravens wide receivers, I think, are they're very interesting dart throws at this point. But Zay Flowers seems like he's going to be the number one guy. And, and also, the matchup is great. Los Angeles, 30th in schedule-adjusted fantasy points. Re recall last week, total Packer domination at the wide receiver position. All right, I said I was going deeper. My tight end, uh, look, you're likely to need underpants on this one, too. It's Isaiah Likely against what, those what, same Chargers. What level underpants? I think he's the base level. Do I got to call the Smith? He's the base, lo base level of... Uh, All right. Steel underpants. It is some steelies. Just some steelies. Look, my guy can whip out steel underpants, no problem. Yeah, that's like it quick. That's yeah. real quick. Um, not always. They don't always fit well, but they're they're steel. They're made out of steel, man. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do you want? There ain't no elastic in there. No breathability. Um, yeah, you don't want to eat too much Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, and try to slip on the same no. pair that fit the week before. Yeah, that's no good. Or you have to get them off in an emergency. No, no, they don't come off. They're permanent. They're permanent <laughs> underpants. Um. Look, it's time to find out what Isaiah likely has in store. The opportunity is there. The matchup, it couldn't be better. Mm -hmm. Chargers, 28th in schedule-adjusted fantasy points allowed to the tight end position. In fact, um, you know, we know the capability. I think the athleticism of Isaiah likely, it's there. How much of the game plan is there? And how healthy is Odell Beckham? I mean, if you're going out there and it's, uh, you know, you got limitations with your receiving targets. No Andrews. Beckham's limited. Bateman's Bateman. Zay Flowers is there. Like, somebody else has to absorb some of that. Especially, uh, you know, the Chargers are capable of putting up some points and making this a game. So, um, Isaiah Likely, going to go with him as my start of the week. I'm playing him in our family league. and is, I'm playing him in our dynasty league. Is that league. what you, you – you That's went, currently So you pivoted, you pivoted back to him. I pivoted uh, based on you two, gentlemen. You, you've oh, talked about you know. Isaiah Likely, and so I hope you're not wrong. Yeah, we weren't wrong about that Waddle Lamb thing. So. No. <laughs> At tight end, uh, I'm going with Taysom Hill against Atlanta. He's coming off the bye. There's a lot of quarterback questions here. Is it Winston? Is it Carr? I think Taysom Hill will be involved in this game a lot, and historically Taysom has destroyed the Falcons in his career. He has four rushing touchdowns, four passing touchdowns, a receiving touchdown, 
He's averaging 7.2 yards per carry. And last year against Atlanta, he was the tight end three on the week. Thanks for going four for 81 and a touchdown on the ground. I think you could put him right back in your lineup. I think it's a really good pick because if Carr is out, how much Taysom do you see? Yeah. You might see a lot. A lot. I'm going might with, be throwing it. I'm going with David Njoku. 15 targets. 15 targets last week from DTR. Combine that matchup. Denver, dead last in uh, fantasy points if you adjust for schedule. Dead last in tight end receiving yards allowed. David Njoku is set up is set up for a big, big week. And a big, big end of the season, I think. Yeah. All right, our starts of the week. We want to thank uh, our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on the Boom Boom Kicker, I escaped prison and hijacked a plane. Just another <clears> week. <throat> Out over open water, my plane became the slaughter. For the megalodon chomped the plane's anus. What? <laughs> Pants stained with pee pee. We were toast like a panini. Uh. Parachuting with the Jaguars, Brandon McManus. <laughs> it's the best one. <laughs> it's a megalodon special. I'm really <laughs> proud of this one, guys. There is no chance that whatever hashtag we reveal later can be trending because no one is here. How they're gone? The plane has an anus. Yeah, the megalodon <laughs> got chomped. chomped the plane's anus. Yeah, also, that's what you and Kyle came up with this week. Also, it sounded like you saved the kicker. Well, weren't you on a quest to destroy all kickers? He's on his way down. I just I, I didn't have time to you know reveal my plan of how i was going to expose uh, or dispose of brandon mcmanus you could have just left him on the plane he, the, the megalodon he, he jumped on it. his own he jumped on the megalodon's <laughs> probably still getting him in the water i'm so sorry everybody <laughs> i'm sorry brandon yeah because your name got pronounced differently today well i mean you gotta rhyme you gotta rhyme yeah you gotta when you have anus you gotta rhyme with it yeah. that's what i've always been taught and uh, from from now on, it is Brandon. Oh no, McManus. Oh, maybe for, for me. Maybe okay. for you. All right. Um. Oh my gosh. Wow, that was uh, that was a megalodon special. I uh, don't worry, folk. We have uh, the fantasy forecast coming up right now. Fantasy forecast. The New Orleans Saints at 5-5 five and five take on the 4-6 and six Atlanta Falcons. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Atlanta minus one. Uh, the over-under is 42. It's kind of been a pick em in in terms of the, the odds. And the winner will take control of the division. Oh, I think that's an exaggeration, actually. Taking control means... Uh, They'll be at the... Yeah, Atlanta could be at the top at 5-6, and six. yes. Come on. I know. Play better. Play better, South. Um, but both teams coming off the buys, uh, both teams high expectations this week. I, who do you like in this game? Let's start there. I think I like the Falcons. Um, the fact that, you know, the game is in Atlanta, you know, it, that kind of sways me a little bit. The quarterback question mark. I think that if I had to project it right now, I think Carr plays, but I worry about how well he plays we've seen him fight through injuries and play really poorly early in the season um I'm a little bit afraid of that for multiple reasons one for uh the the negative that w could happen to Chris Olave and the positive that could happen for Alvin Kamara which is what we saw earlier when he was playing through these injuries and I am playing against Alvin Kamara I think Olave's fine no matter what yeah I do I the Michael Thomas uh his departure, I'm not that worried about him. I think both players will be fine. But I, my question to Mike, because mm -hmm. I think we discussed this when you're out, I would like you to – how would you describe Bijan Robinson's rookie season through 10 games? 
Uh, I would call it for just fantasy. Yeah, just fantasy. I, you call it goodish. Goodish. Yeah. Okay. Goodish. Do we be- think we get more goodish, or do we think we get greatish uh, on the way out? Because to me, this game matters a lot coming out of the bye and where we are with Arthur Smith. Like if if we come out of the bye and Bijan Robinson does what we think he can do, I mean, he's got a tremendous schedule uh, on the way when it comes to against the run, or at least some really good opportunities yeah. for the fantasy playoffs, Carolina, Indianapolis, Chicago. This could be season-defining for him. Like we, if, we, if we're back to the same old thing this week, I think it'll be really disappointing for everybody. The, the nice thing is the last time we saw Bijan, like, Jason had mentioned 24 opportunities, 75% of the snaps. Uh, the targets weren't where you wanted them, but they were playing Arizona, so you can just give it to Bijan 22 times on the ground. I I am optimistic that we will have turned the corner after the bye week. We have the number nine ranked run defense that Bijan will be facing in New Orleans. You also have a new quarterback. That's an old quarterback, but Desmond Ritter taking back over. That last Bijan game, it was Heineke against Arizona. So that'll be one to watch. Obviously, you play Bijan, and you hope for great things, not just yeah. goodish things. Yep. Yeah, it's not a great matchup. I expect him to be more involved in the passing game because it's very difficult to run on the ground against the Saints, um, which you know leads you to believe hopefully Drake London could have a better game. You, know, you, you would hope with uh, Desmond Ritter, you have very little hope. Yeah, and, and and look, I I think I an important week I would be trying to play somebody other than Drake London. I mean, I don't think I play another. I'm not playing another Falcon. Just trying to play Bijan. Bijan end of list. Kyle Pitts. Bijan end <laughs> of list. All right. You know what's crazy? This could be the fourth game in a row that the Falcons play against a like first time starter because they they played against Will Levis for his kind of first. Uh, you know start and then they played against uh kyler and who was the third one now they could be playing against james they they lost to dobbs i believe yeah and dobbs as the first time for the the vikings and they, so they lost to the first time starter in kyler correct they lost to the first time starter in levis correct they lost to the first time starter in dobbs yes so james winston take your w that is on that's the side oh, i'm on he's gonna eat it eat that dub <laughs> oh, yeah yeah, Alvin Kamara has been uh, super reliable, been great, yeah. averaging tons of targets. Doesn't seem like, you know, Kendra Miller can't stay healthy, and Jamal Williams is just an ancillary breath. Um, Olave, you play him and you hope. Mm-hmm. You hope that you see uh, reliability over the back half of the year. And I I think Rashid Shahid is in play. Like, I'd play Shahid over Drake London. Let me put it down. Really? Ooh, no okay. way. I would not personally go that far. Um, I, 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 I – d- I get it. No, I mean, I, I feel like I'd be alone in that. So I, I'm i not – like Shahid has three boom games and everything else is stunk, but I do I do like his integration into the offense. Yeah, I mean, there there's a hope without Michael Thomas that he can step up into a more target-heavy role. Um, we've seen the connection with Derek Carr. This week, though, I'm not personally willing to put him in. I, I need to see Derek Carr's health or see Jameis Winston's tendency – and so I, I'm probably taking a wait and see approach, but I know you're a little bit more bullish on Shahid's talent. You've, you. I like the nine targets last week. Um, split between those quarterbacks. Uh, Taysom Hill's Jason start of the week, and uh, that's it. Mm-hmm. Mike, we've got Pittsburgh six and four taking on the five and five Cincinnati Bengals. Oh man, the DraftKings sportsbook line is Pittsburgh minus one. The over under is thirty four and a half. Come on. Uh, okay, they're on the road. All right. That's not a good over or under. No, it's not a good over or under. It was more of a man. The St- the Steelers are only favored by one against a backup quarterback, but it's in Cincinnati. I had somebody ask me about the prognosis for Jamar Chase rest of season. Okay. Um, we have a hurt T Higgins. Uh, we don't know his situation, but Mike, I'm you know you're somebody who has him on your roster. Are you expecting him back this week? Higgins never, never, <laughs> never. Uh, I was personally quite encouraged with the Jake Browning situation last week. In fact, I had tried to trade for Jamar Chase, masking my optimism. Didn't work out. But I actually think, I I look at Chase uh, as neutral to slight, basically slightly below neutral. You 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 have to downgrade him. You do have to downgrade him. But 
I was really encouraged with how often they let Jake Browning throw right when putting him into that game. And I was pretty encouraged by the way he played. And so, you know, I'm not saying this is going to be an easy situation. Pittsburgh is playing very well on the defensive side of the ball over the last six weeks. But I do think Jamar Chase, you know, they came out and they said they're going to run the offense as normal. I don't know if you saw that this morning. Okay. But they're going to run the offense as normal. They did throw the ball a lot. I thought when Jake Browning came into that game, we would just see endless handoffs to Joe Mixon. And we didn't. So I'm a little bit optimistic that Jake Browning can get it done. Yeah, and yeah. who's favored? Mm. Pittsburgh. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a one-point game. Man, it's only a one-point game. Okay. That was a uh, questioning the yeah, almost upset. Yeah, I got to go look at that line. I mean, I, I, I just think Cincinnati might take care of it at home. Jamar Chase, um, obviously, he has the talent where you could throw him in. It's very similar to Garrett Wilson. He's just a super talented guy who could take over a game, can take any uh, ball to the house. But the floor is very, very low. I think for Jamar Chase, it, it, when you've got these backup quarterbacks that are coming in, they can fall flat on their face. So I do. You know, it's it's probably a player that right now you have to start. I, I can't imagine that there are other options that I would be willing to start over Jamar Chase. I mean, there there could be, like a Tank Dell or something. I, you know, that's that should be an easy, like, let's just go with the guy on fire. But for the most part, you're playing Jamar Chase and you're just holding your breath that Browning doesn't collapse. I've had a lot of questions about Joe Mixon. What do we expect from Joe Mixon, who's been really, really good? He's the RB11 on the year. He's been heavily utilized. He gets all the work. With Jake Browning moving forward, he, you know, he had three top 12 finishes in the last four weeks. What's Joe Mixon rest of the season? He, I mean, assuming they run the offense as usual, it's, it, it's definitely still a downgrade because he's going to have to, uh, he, he won't have the same scoring opportunities. Even if, even if Browning comes in and exceeds our, expectations of being competent and maybe good, you still aren't going to see the scoring like we did before. I did forget that it's been a bad week for people with Brown in their name. Oh, mm. yeah. Because Hollywood Brown, yeah. A.J. Brown. I don't know if Browning Browning. Oh, you don't I want think your it, pants to be Browning. I think they, it counts. <laughs> that's on the way. If, if they are Browning, they you will soon. You don't want your pants to be Browning because <laughs> that is the beginning of fully Brown. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're getting hot at that point. <laughs> we're really, we're really yeah. mostly bathroom focused yeah. here at the Fantasy Footballers. <laughs> Pittsburgh side, we've got a new offensive coordinator. You know, there there are those out there desperate for some life to Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, uh, Jalen Warren's had two straight hundred yard games. Hey, let's throw the ball in the middle of the field, huh? Yeah, let's try that on for size. Like though. The guy that I am most interested to see what happens is George Pickens because really? with yes. the, with Deontay Johnson back and the Matt Canada offense, it, George Pickens went right back into his. This is never going to work. Like we're doing dumb stuff with a very physically gifted wide receiver. I don't. I don't know what the the new play callers are going to do, but that's what I'm like. Deontay Johnson is just he's such a target hog that I can. The, the last couple weeks have been atrocious, but I'm still willing to play him as a flex play. But the guy I'm like really watching is Pickens. Pickens, through the first six weeks of the year, was on pace for 1,500 yards receiving. So like we know he's capable of the big plays. It's just a matter of he gets those opportunities in the right part of the field, not just running fly routes and praying. Jalen Warren, I think Jaylen... definitively ahead of Najee. Yeah, Jalen Warren is the player I'm most interested to see with the new offensive coordinator, what happens, because this is a player who's played his way into more and more touches because every single time those two guys touch the ball, you go, oh, Warren's better. It, everyone on the planet can see it. Warren is better for our offense when we give him the ball. So you have a new offensive coordinator coming in, and you kind of saw this a little bit with James Cook last week, how James Cook was actually in in the inside the five where you know they refused to do that prior to the offensive coordinator change. So if if this game comes out and Jalen Warren has more carries than Najee and is still running the routes and more targets, I would not be surprised. I would be excited for it. That's that's where my eyes are going to be. So so looking uh, top. You know, from a high level here in the game, though, 34 point over under. Is there a chance we're just disappointed with everybody in this one? Yeah. Yes. It's the Steelers. And it's a it's a AFC divisional matchup of like 13, this, 10, like, yeah, 13 was, 10s exactly in the car. exactly what I was going to say. You can have both of these teams at full strength, and their games are not <laughs> really fun to watch. 
Carolina's one and nine, taking on the three and seven Tennessee Titans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Tennessee minus three and a half at home. The over/under is thirty-six and a half. And you know, Mike just brought up he has Derrick Henry as the start of the week. The matchup very juicy. Panthers running defense very bad. It's kind of a funnel system. They they haven't given up a lot to wide receivers because they just give it up on the ground. Yeah, and uh, look, Mike, your start of the week yeah. at the Yeti. We've got uh, we've got a meteorologist update here. Winter is coming. The snow model is humming after last night. Two point four inches in Stowe. Three point five inches in Springfield. Heck, even Brat Brattleboro got yeah. three point seven inches of snow. Oh. Vermont is snowing. And if you're new to the fantasy footballers, when it snows in Vermont, there is a perfect correlation for monstrous Derrick Henry games. It's silly, but it's true. <laughs> but it's science. But it's science. I just want Derrick Henry to get enough work to do it. Uh, if you, you know, want him to get does, enough does work. Does the snow affect his snap counts? Because that's I, – look, I expect him to run hard and run – like a Yeti. No, I mean, but if he's he can't do that on the bench. This is this is the matchup for Derrick Henry. The, it is hard to have the Titans be favored. The Carolina Panthers have found a way uh, by playing against them, and the Carolina Panthers can't stop anyone on the ground. Obviously, you don't need to be told to start Derrick Henry, but this should be a perfect, perfect play. They've only won three games, but in those games, he's averaging eighteen point four fantasy points per game, twenty three rushing attempts, and a hundred rushing yards. And they're favored this week. And that's not going to be the situation for many of their games. Correct. Um, DeAndre Hopkins last week reemerged again. He had the monster game with Levis. Uh, he had a couple of mediocre games, even though the target totals were high. And then last week, the, the flea flicker, uh, he ends up with a 43-yard touchdown, four for 59 and a score. Okay this week? No. No. No, The the <laughs> I mean – if you look at playing the Panthers, this is the same situation that we had all last year with the Houston Texans. When you've got a team that is this bad, like the Texans were last year, the team on the other side of the ball just ends up running it the whole game. They don't throw much. They don't need a lot of passing yards. They There just isn't much to go around. And it took us too long last year to realize with the Texans, like, don't play your – you, you look at them and be like, oh, my quarterback's a great play because they stink. No. It's not because they stink. Um, same with wide receivers. So for me, I'm playing Derrick Henry, and that is it from the Titans. I don't really want the passing game. The seventeen pass attempts for Levis last week, despite losing thirty four to fourteen. Gross. <laughs> oh, Vrabel. <laughs> I mean, it had been up there the week before, thirty nine, thirty nine, and then all of a oh, sudden man. it was like, "Yep, we'll run our way back into this one." Man. Adam Thielen looks like a very good play. Really? Frank Reich uh, was calling plays, and he was a top 24 wide receiver last week. 11 targets, 8 for 74. Thielen uh, or Lockett? Thielen. Okay. that's That makes sense. Uh, are we not playing anybody else? Nope. Thielen, Henry, goodbye. Yeah, the, the running backs have cannibalized each other. All right, quick break. Back with some more matchups. Tampa Bay, four and six, taking on the Indianapolis Colts, who are five and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Indianapolis minus two and a half. The over under is forty four. Look, the Colts have been good for fantasy this year. Home games are averaging fifty seven combined points per game. They're at home this week, but when you play there, that's the most combined points in of any destination, of any team, and uh, both defenses very vulnerable defenses. Buccaneers do stop the run. So I think there are people that, you know, we're expecting big things from Jonathan Taylor. Oh, he got all the work. I know Tampa's really good against the run, but Taylor's in a category where you just yep, lock him in. Yep, yeah, you got to start him. And the nice thing is he's been getting targets when he's been playing with Gardner Minshew. So even if they lock down the, the, the ground game, there should be enough PPR value there. Speaking of Gardner Minshew, does he do enough for Michael Pittman this week? Well, Jason says yes, start of the week. He's got a 30% target share. The real question here is, does he do enough for Josh Downs? Isn't Andy? that – and why is that the real question, Jason? Why – there are I some just, fake questions out there, but why is that the real one? That's the real question because I think that there are lots of people out there that have Josh Downs in their lineup, <laughs> and they want to know, is that good? Uh, he has not played full snaps since week eight. He was 
he was officially on uh, a heater until the the injury, I guess the continued injury, took him out of action. I think Jason might be searching for Josh Downs injury news right now. <laughs> I might. Uh, yeah, he was he was on fire. So I mean, playing we, great. He had, we, yeah, I guess we we do need some news here because they had the bye week, so nothing came out during that time. But the last time we saw Downs, it was twenty five percent of the snaps. That it, was a re injury. Yeah. So it, it's it's important to note um, if you. You might not even remember, but that week 10 uh, game, the last time we saw Downs where he didn't play much at all, that week of practice, he didn't practice. He was a DNP the entire week. I was shocked when he was active for that game and he was barely on the field. So I'm really curious now that they've had the bye week, he's had a little bit more time to recover, what the practice reports say this week. And I, it's too early to know right now. I don't even see a practice report for the Colts, which feels like this should be up by now but um they have not reported yet and so if he is back to full practices i think josh downs is a really good play this terry week. mclaurin and josh downs if he if he's practicing in full i would go josh downs. drake london or josh downs downs if he's practicing in full um Cortland sutton against cleveland or josh downs uh, downs. downs okay Feel like what if he to, uh, practices in half <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's a it's actually a little bit more concerning if he's a limited participant in practice that means he's not fully recovered from the injury that just Sorry. had him play. I have one more for you. Oh. Michael Pittman or Josh Downs? I don't like this game. <laughs> uh, I Mike was trying to get me to trade for Michael Pittman right at our trade deadline. I was trying to give him to you. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> I chose not to. And to be fair. To myself. To myself, it was a mistake. Uh, I regret it, but right. okay. I was right up against the limit, and the timer expired, and then I was like, ah, shoot, I should have done that deal. Oh, he's right in the middle of his uh, Jalen Hurts tilt, too. I yes, mean, there was a lot going on in that mind. But I wish I could do it now, because I love Michael Pittman in this game. Well, the Colts are favored. Baker Mayfield, uh, you know, he's had two-plus passing touchdowns in each Dome game. The over-under is nice. The, uh, it's okay, and, and they've over, yeah, you know, they've kind of overperformed it. So, look, Mike Evans has been a monster. Baker is a very fine streaming option. We do have an updated piece of information here that I don't know if Jason has heard. Uh, Mayfield was asked about his favorite Thanksgiving food. Oh, okay. And he said he's a dessert guy, and he named Grandma Ma's banana pudding. Oh, baby! Oh, baby Baker! Start him. I mean, start him. I mean, that has to move Baker up in your rankings. He's number one. <laughs> he's ordering he's literally my number one. Nobody likes banana flavored desserts more than Jason Moore. Maybe Baker Mayfield. I'm gonna be honest. Look, I'm not saying anything. I'm not judging you by saying this. But I've never known anybody to like banana desserts that much at all. Mm. I think it's a pretty low. I mean, Baker's the second person I know. Well, I'm putting a poll up right now. A what, what is the poll? Do you like <laughs> banana desserts? Is that fair? Is that worded? Uh, no, I mean, I think it's too neutral. Do you really like banana okay. But all right I'm, I'm good with that okay do We're, you really like, that's the stupidest worded poll ever do you really like banana dessert okay we can reword that <laughs> no no is it's that what perfect. you went with it's perfect i'm posting it do you really like banana dessert just came out of nowhere okay let's find out the people who are only likes they're gonna have a really tough time with this poll yeah they're gonna say well i like it <laughs> but do i really like it Can he, he asked a very specific question do you involve banana desserts in your uh thanksgivings uh if i can if i can i, I just do. voted by the way you voted no oh you dog i mean the way i view banana desserts is that if i was at a place and they had no desserts Mm -hmm. Or they have banana desserts. I would prefer the banana desserts. Yeah, because they're good. Well, because I want <laughs> I want dessert. Um, yeah. If it says bananas Foster, like if that is labeled on anything, a drink, a a, a dessert. What makes it bananas Foster versus banana? It's like caramel banana. Okay, that sounds better. Oh, it's real good. Right R now, I mean, right well, now, sixty forty. Yes, baby. We have taken the majority. The banana people. The bana us, us banana people. You, Baker, and everyone else. This is a little bit banana. Uh, Deucer's Alley. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Are you in the banana crew? Do we? Can I get thumbs up or I'm, thumbs down for banana desserts? I'm just a like. Okay. I'm Brooks, I said thumbs up or thumbs down. You have to make a choice. Then down. Okay, down, down, and then we got one up. All right. Mm -hmm. I voted no. I did You're too. not a deucer. No. 
Thankfully. Um, Rashad White's a must start. He's a start of the week. Chris Godwin, look, he's he's you gotta put the name away a little bit, I think. I, think I you, agree with you. I think you gotta make you gotta realize that like He's been bad? Yeah, and it's not just now. I mean, like, this has been it's been a while, to be honest yes, with you. Yes, it has. I mean, if you look at last year's uh numbers, it's kind of similar to what he's doing now. He's just well, kind of pedestrian. We had hoped that we would see the resurgence of Chris Godwin after being fully recovered from the ACL tear, but uh, Baker Mayfield is a Mike Evans stand, and that's where he goes. And I, I will say this. Um, I really like targeting players against Indianapolis. We've done it with great success all year, but over the last month, there's been a couple other matchups that you target for wide receivers, like Tennessee, where... Chris Godwin had six targets against Tennessee, scored seven fantasy points. He's just these are not valuable targets he's getting against Houston. He had six targets in that game, scored two fantasy points. So while the matchup is exciting, I think that it you know it it obviously has been a trap over the last couple of weeks. I love Rashad White, I love Mike Evans, and of course baker's the quarterback one but outside of those three i th i think uh i think that's all you want I, in this game. i agree for the most part but i think that kate otten is potentially a spicy surprise this week kate otten is the 100 percent break glass tight end for everybody in a desperate situation because he plays every snap and that's one of the prerequisites and, i want and the matchup for is, my team is good like this is yeah you're right you're it, right this is one of those games that it's over under at 44 right now this one could, I think could oh, end up go going – this could go to a back and forth. We're down to 50. The uh, over-under is at 44. That seems shocks low. me. Yeah. yeah, that seems really low. All right, the banana people, it's down to 58%. Oh, no. So, uh, you know, it's still too high. Too high for me. All right, we're moving to the New England Patriots game. Oh, boy, guys, Patriots, Giants. It's just a Super Bowl rematch from years gone by. Games in New York. The over under is thirty three points. They're combined five and sixteen. Thirty. It might be too high. Wait, thirty three and a half. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> the DraftKings sportsbook line here for is yeah. New England minus three, but it, it it's projecting an eighteen fifteen juggernaut matchup. You know what would be really nice? A chance at rain in this game. Let's let's have the weather. Oh, we, is that what we have? Yeah, we got a good chance of rain in this one. They're not um, domed up over there in New York, huh? Oh no, no, no. They're football weather. They're tough guys. All right. I mean, like it's sloshy, sloppy ball. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you say, Jason, you want this game? No, 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 no. Okay. No, I'm uh, turning my back on this. This game. is the 31st and 32nd ranked teams in points per game. Uh, I mean, this game doesn't interest me enough to make an almost upset, but I think the Giants might win it. So, okay. I guess I'll, okay. I guess I'll do it. Andy's almost upset of the week. Tommy DeVito. <laughs> Look, play Saquon. Yes. Uh, we're done and with the exit. Giants. Yeah. Uh, play Ramondre. I would agree. Maybe play Zeke. Sure, and maybe, maybe play Pop Demario yeah. Pop Douglas if uh, Zeke you... Pop and Ramondre. Yeah. Okay. What is the next game? I, I honestly, we don't have to talk about that no more, right? Please, please. Oh, just the, the the last note here: Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi split all the reps during the you media portion. I hope they split the reps during the game. They probably will. I want, whoever third, starts I want a third down quarterback. That's what that's what I want. You know, okay. it's like let's take the NFL to the next level. Like third and long, he's our guy that can throw it harder. We do have <laughs> we do have a quote from Mac Jones who says, "quote I know the locker room has my back." No, you don't. Oh man. <laughs> I normally – no, most people get surgery, but I didn't. <laughs> oh, man. Mac. Dude, I, when I saw him in the press conference, I felt terrible for Mac Jones. He looked like the saddest man on yeah. earth. And they're like, uh, does the coach have confidence in you? He's like, I don't, I don't know. Should he? I don't know. I know the yeah. locker room has my back. Yeah. yeah it's, no. No, it it's doesn't. It's not going well. Jacksonville 7-3, and three, Houston 6-4, and four, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Jacksonville minus 1.5. The over-under is 48.5. Now, this is a game. Let's have a game. Let's have a shootout. 48 and a half. That's wonderful. Lawrence, Ridley, turned it up last week. Beautiful. Scored a pile of points. Um, C.J. Stroud and company took care of Arizona. Stroud threw for, you know, he's averaging more yards per game than any 
quarterback in football, guys. The rookie. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been incredible. It's fantastic. Uh, he's got the most pass plays of 20-plus yards, and he's got the targets to throw it the, them to. I mean, Tank Dell's running wild down the field. Nico Collins, big target. Um, downfield target, great yards per catch. Like, C.J. Stroud this week at home against the Jaguars, are we are, are we ready to just kind of elevate him into a – like, he's so enjoyable to watch. Into a must-start situation? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, C.J. Stroud is – um, certainly someone that should be started in, in most situations. I mean, obviously you're not going to start him over the creme de la creme, Jalen Hurts type of guys, but, I mean, he's just been – Brock real... Purdy or C.J. Stroud? I would go Brock Purdy there. Okay. Kyler Murray or C.J. Stroud? Kyler, and I think that's basically right after that is where C.J. Stroud comes in. I'll take Stroud. Over Kyler? Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. I just really like the rushing baseline. Are we ready to say but... good – like go, Justin, I'm sorry, go ahead. Justin Herbert this week against Baltimore, that or CJ Stroud. I I think I lean Stroud there. Um, all right, Devin Singletary has been on fire. Yeah, he is getting everything. He's had two consecutive weeks of over twenty fantasy points, catching the football, scoring. I think he's a poor play. You're uh, saying no matter what. Because, I mean, Jacksonville's yeah. been giving up a lot of points on the ground over the last six weeks. Yeah, I mean, 20 points on the ground. He's been on fire. Offensive player of the week. They're now. a very, very tough rushing defense. On the course of the season, they're fourth against running backs. Uh, but as far as yardage on the ground, they're, they're just actually a good running defense. The last time we saw him against a good running defense where he got all the work against Tampa, he was two yards a carry, got shut down, was a, was a really poor play. Um, I'm not saying you. Ha I'm not saying you have to bench Singletary, but I don't think, you know, he's he's heating up. I don't think he catches fire this week against Jacksonville, regardless of Pierce's situation. Right, right, right. This is assuming. What I if mean, Damian Pierce is active? If Pierce is active, then I'm looking to Mike. What do you? Uh, I, I'm you agree? Looking to move away. Do you agree, I, Jay? He's just. It's a volume play. I I agree that I would not be looking at the last two weeks going, being very excited to play Singletary. If Assuming he's alone, you would or you wouldn't. Wouldn't. Well, I'm not excited. At, like I'm tempering the expectations because I don't. I think that it's a tougher matchup. I know the last six weeks, it has been, you know, a little bit better for for running backs against the Jags. But I have, I have concerns. For I think Singletary. that I think that the public opinion on Singletary differs quite a bit from you two, from what I've seen. Because yeah, this is the RB three and the RB four the last two yeah. weeks. I mean, I've had people sending me Twitter messages saying, "Do I play him?" over Jonathan Taylor this week because Taylor's matchup isn't good. And Singletary's carried them to victory. So I think it's a really tough decision for people. It is. I am very, very comfortable starting Singletary with no Damian Pierce. If Damian Pierce is back, um, I, I think you have to stop the loyalty that you've had to Singletary over the next couple last I'm, couple weeks. I mean, I'm starting him, you know, if I'm looking at a... Like Mixon versus Singletary by himself. Ooh, I... Mm. I would go mix, and uh, the the Steelers haven't been great at stopping the run. I'm okay going Singletary there. Travis Etienne, uh, this is the the matchup for you, maybe. <laughs> he hasn't scored in a while, and so he's had a couple subpar games. Are we, you know, look at this matchup? Are you playing Singletary by himself or Etienne? Etienne. Etienne. Okay. What is the wide receiver room going to be like this week for Trevor Lawrence and company? Uh, go, ahead, go ahead and make the most impossible prediction possible. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really tough. Um, obviously, this was Zay Jones back. Calvin Ridley had the huge game. Chris Kirk was pretty mild. I'm going to continue to believe what we've seen over the course of the season, that Christian Kirk is the primary guy that you should start and not just be reactionary to one game back with Zay Jones. Uh, it, it will be interesting. Uh, but I'm still, if I'm ordering it, I'm ordering it. Krisha Kirk, Calvin Ridley, Zay Jones. I guess I skipped over the non-Tank Dell options. I guess Tank Dell's in your lineup, but Nico Collins did yeah. have 11 targets. with so 7 he's for in. 65. He's in, right? Oh, yeah. he's in. Yes. Over Ridley? I Yeah, I would I would start uh, Nico and Tank over Ridley. That'll be a tough call for people. I think that that's important in advice because a lot of, uh, everybody, or I guess, I guess a lot of people had Ridley on their bench last week. And they felt burned and like, okay, yep. he's back. What do you do? So as of right now, Noah Brown is questionable. If Noah Brown is back, do you 
I mean, like he's he was on the exact same fire path that Devin Singletary is currently on, wide receiver two and seven before his injury. Do you? One of those put was him no Nico, out? and one was no Robert Woods, I believe. Yes. So, so coming I, back from injury, it's just with, crazy. Yeah, I mean, when you've got the uh, passing leader in yards, there's tank, a lot of yards to go tank, around. Tank, Nico, Brown, order. Yes. That's, yeah, I think that's all do it. All right, Trevor Lawrence, four touchdowns last week. Texans, they give it up. Yeah, it's you're hoping for a shootout, so I'm okay with Lawrence. Jason talked about putting him in that streaming category, and this is a week you would stream him. Yeah, exactly. This is a very good matchup for, for quarterbacks and for tight ends, and they've got a good one in Evan Ingram. So Evan Ingram seems like a top 10 play this week. Uh, he's got an NFL high 71 targets without a touchdown. That's crazy. He is due. Yeah, and this is a good matchup for that. Uh, if, if you adjust for schedule, the Texans are the 32nd best team against tight ends, meaning they're the worst. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Cleveland, 7-3 and three against the 5-5 five and five, uh, suddenly streaking and favored in this game. Denver Broncos, DraftKings Sportsbook line, Denver minus one and a half, the over under is 35. Question one, Jason, are you surprised that Denver's favored in this? I'm game? shocked that Denver's favored in this. That's how I reacted, and Mike was not surprised. No, I think Denver wins. Wow. I'm on the other side of that. I, yeah. do, I do not think they win. I I, I think they've uh, done an admirable job. Their defense has totally revamped itself. It went from uh, the stinkiest of doo-doo to one of the better defenses. They're locking people down, but I don't think their offensive woes have been healed. They haven't looked great on offense by any means. And if you've got a mid-level offense, we'll call it, against the Cleveland Browns defense, I don't think Russ is having a fun game. In I, yeah, I, I'm fantasy-wise, I would be terrified of, of everybody on the, on the Broncos' side, but I'm... Uh, aside from David Njoku on the other side, I would feel the same about all the, the Cleveland Browns options. The way I'm seeing this, the game script is the Broncos defense has turned it around. And I haven't, and, and Dorian Thompson Robinson has not shown, I, I get it. He beat the Steelers. He's not beating the, I don't think he's beating the Broncos on the road. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, right now it's projected as a close game with a low over under. What is the over under? Uh, 35. Way too high. Okay. Yeah, I could see that for sure. You know, the um, Browns figured it out last week in 13-10 game. I'm comfortable with Ford. Uh, I'm fine with that. Uh, I don't think a high, a, a big-time performance, but you're talking maybe, you know, double digits. Maybe. Javante Williams versus Zach Charbonnet is the number one of the top questions Ooh, that's a, on our website. That's a toughie. Because the matchup for Javante is it's a tough one. Um. I will, and there's you know P Ryan last week was seven targets. Mm -hmm. I'm going. I'll go Charbs. I will as well. I'm. It's consensus. Yeah. It's your well, it would have been consensus you know. no matter what. Are you saying it's unanimous? You know what? You're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Just wanted clarity there. Unanimous was the word I was looking for. All right. <laughs> consensus is you. Once it's two of you, it's consensus. Majority rules. But, um, yeah, I think uh, post-Thanksgiving uh, charbohydrates, is that what you're, oh, you're, nice. in, you're in on that? Nice. Yeah. Over Javante? Yeah, that's not busted. Okay. Cortland Sutton, we chasing the infinite touchdowns <laughs> against the Cleveland Browns defense, th that secondary. I'm not. I'm not excited for it, but he'll get one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, at this, <laughs> at this point, I'm not going to bet against him getting a touchdown. When we played flag football, there would be – we'd get around the goal line, and there was one receiver that I just had a play, and I just always threw it to the same guy mm -hmm. most of the time. And it worked, like, almost all the time. It really does feel like the dream for fantasy players where you're like, if they're within the 10 and they're not running, you're just like, you know Russ is going to throw it to Cortland Sutton. It's like having Jalen Hurts and being so happy whenever you're on the one-yard line. There's no worry about a running back getting the ball. They, they've got to move, and they're going to do it. Every time, not if you not a lot. Every time, if you had bet on Cortland Sutton catching a touchdown every single week, only twice would you have lost. It's amazing. It's the it's it's the um, kryptonite of fantasy analysis. 
is you can't it's really hard to be here and be like, yeah, just play him because he's gonna score. Because touchdowns are, are not supposed to work that way. No. And they don't really work that way Mm-mm. for anybody. Except for Cortland Sutton this year. I mean, he scored in both Kansas City games. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And so, you know, Javante, we talked about him. I mean, the matchup is really tough, and I was really disappointed last week in the utilization. So I, I do have – I got a little thrown off. I thought we were heading to a new place with Javante. It, Yeah, it really seemed like that. You had 30 opportunities before the bye week, 25 against Buffalo, and then it – Plummeted to 13. And he's been 3.1 a carry, 3.8 a carry, yeah. 3.4 a carry. He's, he's not the same player yet. No. And um, they do use three backs. Like Jaleel McLaughlin gets on the field. Yeah. Can you start Amari Cooper? You can. You can start. You're just not allowed to watch. It, would you start Amari Cooper or Cortland Sutton? Sutton. Yeah, me too crazy wow. it, it's such a shame in in the two dtr starts right now amari cooper has five catches for 50 yards total that's just yeah you just you got two get, for 25 yeah, you gotta get good. you gotta get lucky with sutton but you gotta get lucky with cooper and and sutton's been working out so yeah that's that's the story but it's a tough defensive game you said the 35 is too high for you yeah yeah i mean the, you, you saw it last week w- against the steelers uh, i do think that the Broncos offense is better than the Steelers offense but the Steelers were able to come up with 10 points against this defense the Browns defense is the best in the league the Los Angeles Rams are four and six and they take on the two and nine Arizona Cardinals in Arizona the DK Sportsbook line this one surprised me too but Arizona have one point favorites the over-unders 44 and a half um, the lines have been moving back and forth basically a pick them but Arizona's favorite right now they got hammered by the Rams in week six, but that was Dobbs. And Sean McVay is 11-2 and two historically against Arizona. I actually do think Arizona might win this game, though. So, you know, when they, they play pretty well at home, Kyler, um, they, you know, his debut is against Atlanta at home. They took care of it. Could be a pretty interesting game. Yeah, You it, certainly don't have the defensive juggernaut battles that we've been talking about. You have... Very vulnerable defenses, although Arizona's has been slightly better over the last six weeks. They still give up a lot of points, especially to running backs. Yeah, so the the looking at the weapons for Arizona, Hollywood Brown has been extremely disappointing in the two starts with Kyler Murray. He has uh, caught three passes for, or he's averaging 23 yards uh, a game over those two weeks. Uh, I guess you... I don't know, Jason. Are you are you playing Hollywood? He's on your roster. I I currently have Josh Downs in ahead. Okay, I think of that Hollywood. says a lot. Right. Yeah. And and obviously I'll be monitoring the practice reports for Josh Downs, making sure he's healthy or not. Uh, I do believe you can start Hollywood Brown. He's been, you know, a yard away in both of those games from a touchdown, hitting him, you know, correctly in the hands as the rust is worn off with. Kyler, this this could be a fine play. Um, I don't think he is a must bench, but you're certainly super disappointed with what's happened so far. I would um, love to start Kyron Williams. So. Sure. Uh, pay- Kyron or Connor? Let's say you have that decision on your roster. It's an easy Kyron for me. I mean, the Cardinals are maybe not the worst against running backs in the league, but they are right really up close. there. Yeah, oh. I, I, I like the Connor side there. Really? I do. I will take a bet on that. I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> you want to? <laughs> yeah, baby. Water bet. I do. I mean, you have strong convictions around Kyron, so strong that you would rather face Alvin Kamara than Kyron. If if Jameis Winston is the quarterback, yes. Pay attention to the health of Michael Wilson, because uh, this this will be a DFS situation. But if Michael Wilson can't go again, Greg Dortch was 6 for 76 this past week against Houston. I'm not starting him in my season long, but DFS He is such a snap goblin at the wide receiver yeah. position. If there's one opportunity, he will get in there and he performs. He is I like I you got to feel some somewhat bad for Dorch cuz every time the team calls upon him, mm-hmm. he produces and then the team's like thank you. Thank you. Why don't you go back to go go to back to the bench? We are not emotionally yeah. or financially invested in you, so please back of the line yeah. again. Trey McBride, 
yeah, this is a great matchup for him. I know that we were maybe disappointed last week because it looked like a smash play where you were going to get a a lot of, you know, at least double-digit fantasy points, and it didn't come through, but he didn't have a bad game for tight ends. Seven targets, five receptions. This matchup is another really good one. They're 31st against uh, on, on the season uh, against tight ends. So Laporta or McBride? I would go McBride this week. McBride. Okay. Um, and yay, Puka. Yeah, this is this is going to be a real issue if you're facing Puka this week. He, he's going to have a pile of targets. He he catches them. That's one of the big problems if you're facing him. He catches all those targets. Cooper Cup. I mean, low ankle sprain. Do we do we have any updates? I really would love to hear anything yeah. at all about Mister Cooper Cup, who who kind of just tried to run on the sideline, was clearly uncomfortable after the injury, never came back out on the field. And yet the injury is not a high ankle sprain, so well, this is really helpful. I saw there's a chance he could play. Oh, it's so a mild surprise, or a chance he could go on IR. <laughs> IR? Goodness, it's a, poss- it's a possibility. Wow. Well, Wait, what? Or he, could, or he's just gonna play. So we'll so, yeah. TBD. Um, that leads me to believe that he might not play this week. He might play, or we might sit him down for four games. That doesn't and, make sense. Or, or, I mean, rest of season. If Cooper Cup goes on the IR, he's Yeah, he's, he's not done. coming off. So those with him on their team, he might play. Those facing him, he might go on IR. That's right. what they're saying. <laughs> um, also, assuming let, – let's let's do wow. the, the uh, exercise that Cooper Cup is not in this game. If he's right. not in this game, I think Tutu Atwell is yep. a very good play. Fully agree. Uh, in, the, in the games without Cup – He's had eight targets, nine targets, nine targets, nine targets. He was he was still involved uh, last week, drew some important PIs, and has been decent for fantasy when Cup hasn't been there. When Cup's not there, never never look to Tyler Higby. His his usage will never change. No. It's always going to be like 2-2 stepping up or some of the other options. Well, that's funny. I was going to say, over the first four weeks, he was a top 12 option, three of the four that Cooper Cup missed. 49 yards, 71-64. I don't have the stones. Yeah, I mean, when, when you when you say those numbers, n- not one of those was ten fantasy points. I mean, he he was top twelve fantasy option with six point four fantasy points. One of those weeks, he he's not helping you win. Um, he he hasn't been involved around the end zone, so I I'm not really in on Higby. Right. Um, moving on. Yep. Kansas City seven and three taking on the five and six Las Vegas. Raiders, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Kansas City minus eight and a half. The over-under is 43. You know, last week, I think there were some, there were significantly higher expectations for the Miami offense than what we got against the Las Vegas Raiders. It was a seven-point game, I believe. Wasn't that final score 17-10? Which one? Sorry, I was looking something up. Raiders, Dolphins last week. Uh, I can look that up. I don't remember off the top of my Raiders, head. Raiders Dolphins was 13 20 to 20. Th- yeah. Okay, a seven point game. 13 to 20. Look, I this one was very tempting to me, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, the Chiefs offense is struggling. The Raiders defense has been very good, especially against the quarterback position where right now Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes' fantasy output the last three weeks, people are questioning whether you start him. Like there are other options that are performing at a really high level, and, and when you have Patrick Mahomes and then you look across your league and you see Brock Purdy putting up big games and, and Sam Howell putting up big games and Dak Prescott putting up big games, you're like, I signed up for that. Mm-hmm. I I paid a lot probably to put Patrick Mahomes on my roster, and they're averaging the least touchdowns per game that they've averaged in the last five years. And and we've we've brought this up. We brought it up early in the season, but I completely credit the majority of that. I mean – Certainly the wide receiver core for the Chiefs deserves some credit, but the Kansas City Chiefs defense is fully legit. They're a top five defense this year. They don't need to go out there and and put 40 points on the board. It's rare that another team has been able to hang with them and and cause Mahomes to get into a, a real passing situation. They're able to run the ball with Pacheco. So it's it's been one of those situations where – you just don't need Mahomes. You don't need the wide receivers to catch the ball. They can drop it, and usually you, the Chiefs still win. The game ends up somewhat simple for fantasy purposes. I mean, on the on the Raiders side, you play Jacobs and, and Adams. Mm-hmm. Um, the nice thing about Adams is, you know, he had a he's had a couple decent target games in a row, but the he also had like a a good performance against the Jets two weeks ago, which was a tough matchup. So 
It's a really tough matchup. It it is with Snead, but that's what I was going to say. A credit to Mike Clay talking about Legereus Snead and just how great he's been shadowing the past nine games, and he has been overwhelmingly shutting people down. And like, it, it's it's funny because the the one except for Josh Palmer, I say the one real big blip is Josh Palmer who went five for one thirty three. Maybe he underestimated his opponent, but big names that that Snead has been shutting down. So I'm. I'm playing Adams, but you yeah, know, it, it could go, it, it could, could go, go really poorly yeah. against a good defense with Aiden O'Connell. The I mean, nice we, thing is, is Adams put up seven for one fifty three and two with Jarrett Stidham against the highest ranked San Francisco defense last year. So he at least yeah. can do it against bad ones. But it, I'm scared as someone who has Adams. I'm nervous. Yep, and Jacoby Myers, you kind of Jacoby Myers shouldn't gotta, be on your roster. Yeah, it's it sucks. Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's a good out. player. He looked great with Jimmy Garoppolo. But the Aiden O'Connell, um, new Raiders, you you can't be playing the wide receiver, too, Michael especially Mayer, in this matchup. Four for 46 last week. Do you care? Nope. Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> Isaiah Pacheco. You know, I, I had resistance last week to my Rashi Rice thought processes, but it's just, look, every week you are you – are, you're playing this roulette of doom. Like I, I would not start any wide receivers for Kansas no, City. No, it's, it's Kelsey and Pacheco out. Okay, okay, I'm in on that. Buffalo, Philadelphia, DraftKings Sportsbook line: Philly minus three and a half. The over/under is forty-eight and a half. Okay, okay, okay. A little bit of chance of rain. Are you? Do you want this game? I want to find the weather first i i did not enjoy watching the uh eagles play in the rain this last week um i really hope that it does hit this over under and that you get it back you don't want this rain i don't want this rain no uh -huh. i don't want this rain okay but uh you know hopefully josh allen the new offensive coordinator they can figure out the woes of the buffalo bills offense and be able to keep up. I mean, obviously, whenever you've got Josh Allen against Jalen Hurts, you hope and maybe even expect big things. But we just had Jalen Hurts against Patrick Mahomes and had a pretty stinky affair. I mean, that was Jalen Hurts' second worst game of the season. Yeah, I look, it, it was uh, it was a weird one because that was a game where, like, the Philadelphia defense has been vulnerable, and yet Chiefs couldn't take advantage of it. Chiefs couldn't put up any points. Well, so, the nice thing is. Stephon Diggs can catch, and they've got you know a, a guy that can really exploit the weaknesses of the Eagles' defense. So Dalton Kincaid as well has looked you know like the new hotness. Uh, the matchup is fine. Um, so I I do think that the Bills are going to be able to move the ball, which hopefully will pressure the Eagles to uh, put up more points. You feeling comfortable, with James Cook, right now? Uh, yeah, I I think I am because uh, he is. Here's what we know about him. He's very talented. He looks good. When he touches the ball, he he does well. Last week, with the new offensive coordinator, he was a top 10 running back because he actually got a touchdown in the receiving game, and that came inside deep in the red zone where he hasn't been on the field. If you're telling me he gets between the 20s and a little bit of the red zone stuff, now I'm interested. Now, the matchup isn't good, uh, but you know, you're, you're hoping that he does more work through the air. That was where he got his touchdown last week. Any spicy surprises in this game? Gabe Davis. I mean, it, truly, this matchup is... No. no I'd I, rather play Khalil Shakir. I I don't blame anyone for not wanting to play Gabe Davis. You said spicy surprises, and Gabe Davis could certainly, against this Eagles defense, have one of his big, weird, explosive games. What's the snap counts for Gabe Davis? Are they the Did same you, as they've been? Uh, Let me check. I mean, his targets yeah, pretty per much. run are dreadful. He's turning into Alec Pierce. Sure. Um, I was I was looking at Shakir because Shakir went from his – he was always in the 30s and then 65, 71, 74, 78. Uh, both of them are, are spicy risks. Oh, for sure. I mean, you, you, you know the floor for Gabe Davis is flat out a zero. Uh, th this is why right now he's on my bench against you, Andy, when he, in this matchup, could be – uh, a weak winner and so if I get into a big hole and th and this is a later game in the week so I think a lot of people who have Gabe Davis and because there's so many games early in the week 
he is someone that you're going to have to look at your matchup and say, do I need a big explosive option versus just someone that can go out and reliably score me, yeah. you know, eight or nine points. If eight or nine points isn't going to get it done for you and you're going to lose yeah. if that's what you've got, then take your reliable guy out and put Gabe Davis in there and hope you get 25. Yeah, he's the uh, George Pickens. He's yeah. the Jameson Williams. Dalton Kincaid, though, in this matchup, Eagles struggle, and they have struggled recently against the tight end position. Um, Kincaid, if they need to score points, he should be heavily involved, right? It's a great play, yeah. Yeah, very safe. DeAndre Swift, yep. A.J. Brown, yeah. Yeah, Devontae yep. Smith, yeah. Yep. And do we have any knowledge on Dallas Goddard? I think there's a chance he plays in this game. Uh, the matchup is pretty good. I don't know that you want to start him in his first week back, and we don't. It's so it's, early how in the can week. He possibly play. He was considered doubtful for the Monday Night Football game last week, so they didn't put him on the IR, right? Yeah, but didn't he fracture his arm? Uh, I mean, he shouldn't be playing, but yes, he did fracture his arm. Yeah, there, there's a chance he could be out there, but I, I'm not optimistic. And I look first game back out there. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not avoiding him. him. But uh, I. I did look at maybe, uh, at the trade deadline for the could be end December of season. Yeah, maybe. Could be the okay. Dallas game according yeah, right. to Sirianni. So probably out this week. Baltimore eight and three Sunday night football taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. So we've got what? We've got three Thursday games. We've got a. Black Friday game. Mm -hmm. We got Sunday morning games, and we got Sunday night games, and then we got Monday night games. Yeah, a lot of football this week. <sighs> I hope we got leftovers because I'm I'm gonna be chomping all weekend. Baltimore eight and three, Chargers four and six. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Baltimore minus three and a half. The over under is forty seven points. The Chargers are four and six. That's just that's that's unacceptable. If you've got Justin Herbert, you can't lose the majority of your games. You ever targeted Quentin Johnston, though? <laughs> you ever done that before? Oh, that's that's one of the ways you could lose. Yeah. That drops last week. I mean, it's not just Johnston. Donald Parham, huge first down, drops in the middle of the field. Keenan Allen, two drops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of them bounced off his chest, a little sunny outside. That was a lot of sunny. Uh, well, That was in the end zone, right? Yeah, was, yeah, yeah that, that was, was just going to walk in. I also had one on the sideline, though, that he dropped where he would have gone in as well. Um, You know, they put up points. The over-under is nice. Justin Herbert's got a tough matchup, though. I mean, the Ravens' defense is not a good time. And he doesn't have, you know, Mike Williams isn't there. Josh Palmer isn't there. Austin Eckler, I don't know if he's there. I think he, he is. I think I think he's okay. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I know that uh, I might be a little bit pessimistic because of how he looked last week, and obviously the, the fantasy production was bad. But something looked off with Austin Eckler last week. I mean, Andy and I noticed it not at the end of the game when the stat line was bad. It was like he's running weird. He's running slow. He looks not like himself. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't heard anything. I've, I've looked for injuries. I have not, to no, my knowledge, I, seen anything. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. And I, I tried to look at the whole season as, you know, kind of looking at how he's been. He's had, you know, 27 yards rushing, 45, 29, 47, 67, 64. So the first game of the year looked real, real good. Tons of work, tons of everything that normal Eckler. And the receiving game was good the last three weeks. So he could be fine. Yeah, I mean, it's all But it's Baltimore, it. It, so you also have to look at it and say, hey, what, what's my ceiling here? Yeah, this is, this is about whether or not they get him back involved in the receiving game. Uh, this last week, only two receptions for six receiving yards. That won't get it done. The previous he weeks, needed him. the previous weeks before that was eight targets, seven targets, seven targets, ninety-four yards, twenty-three, forty-eight yards through the air. They did need him, so I, I'm really. He had a drop be, too, or he, two drops. He had two drops in that game. It Man, was poor, really Just, poor Justin. But yeah, right now you're playing him, but you just you just are hoping you get vintage. Yeah, and then Keenan, of course, leads the NFL in targets. I think if Everett sits, Parham is an interesting uh, option. I don't want to play Donald Parham against the Baltimore Ravens. You playing Kate Otten or Parham? Kate Otten. Okay. Uh, I guess. I liked it last week. I liked Parham's involvement. But, yeah, I get it. It's a tough matchup. Lamar? Yeah. 
Lamar loses Mark Andrews. I think the offense um, needs Mark Andrews. I think that's something Certainly. we fundamentally know from three years of watching Lamar Jackson play quarterback is it's not the same offense. Now, he had a big game last, last week. So, you know, he's going to have to put it on his shoulders. He's going to have to run the football. In Los Angeles, they love to let you do whatever you want. Yeah, you you just have to ask Harbaugh, what would you like to do? And if he says, I'd like to run the ball, they'll say, right this way. Um, if they want to throw the ball and really show that they can do it without Mark Andrews, they'll say, be our guest. Um, be the, our guest. So in this matchup with Herbert on the other side of the ball, I would imagine Harbaugh's going to want to run it. And that means that you could start Gus Edwards, who's been obviously on fire, nine rushing touchdowns in the last five games. He'll get another one. But I also think you could start Keaton Mitchell. Even though it was disappointing this last week, you saw Justice Hill, I believe, with one carry. He's basically been usurped. Keaton Mitchell continuing to get more work, uh, continuing to get healthier from that uh, previous injury. He looks great. And if there's a matchup where you could get it done, it would be the Los Angeles Would Chargers. you play kind of similar art type of players? Would you play Keaton Mitchell or, or uh, Ty Chandler against the Chicago Bears? I would play Keaton Mitchell. Would you play in a flex spot Keaton Mitchell or the, take a shot at the Nonze Flowers wide receivers for Baltimore in a, you know, Chargers giving up 32 points a game? Yeah, if I'm in a PPR league, I'll, I'll go Beckham because he's been involved. I know he's dealing with his injury, but I would go Beckham ahead of Keaton Mitchell. Um, I would go Keaton Mitchell ahead of Rashad Bateman. Okay. All right, Isaiah Likely, my start of the week. I'm going to be starting him nervously but hopeful. Sure. Chicago, Monday night football game, Bears at 3-8, and eight, Josh Dobbs in prime time, Vikings at 6-5, and five, the DK Sportsbook line, Minnesota minus 3.5, the over-under is 43. This is definitely a game that I could see going either direction with Justin Fields being back out there. It was a 19-13 game in week six when they played. Not a, you know, what are your expectations here? I mean, we got to wait and find out about Justin Jefferson. If he's back, let me ask you this. Would you put him right back in your lineup, and then would you be sitting Addison knowing that, you know, Josh Dobbs is not Kirk Cousins? Yeah, that would be interesting. If he is back, I'm going to definitely put him in my lineup. I'm not sitting on Justin Jefferson on my bench. Um, and if that happens where Jefferson is back, I probably would look elsewhere for Addison. Addison, without Jefferson – you know, last week was three for 44. He's still a great player. I don't think he's a must bench. He's not someone where it's like, if Jefferson is back, you can't play Addison. But he becomes someone that you then have to take a look at what your options are and consider benching him. If he's going to be the, probably at that point, the third read in this offense because Hawkinson, you know, Dobbs looks to the tight end a lot. Other thoughts on the offensive side of the ball, running backs, Mike. For Minnesota? Yeah. I it, I think they they might they both might be in play. Alexander Madison is still getting a ton of work. We saw sixty five percent of the snaps that turned into twenty opportunities. Unfortunately, he did fumble again. Um, and Ty Chandler is is it's very it's very Najee Jalen Warren right now of Madison, more the the rumbler and the the big guy who should see goal line work. And the, but Ty Chandler is just so incredibly fast. I'm concerned about the Bears' rushing defense and how great it's been. Over the past six weeks? Like, I, I could see <laughs> – I understand your argument for both. I could see an argument for neither because of that. I mean, it, it's been kind of tough playing runners against them. Yeah, I, I get Minus that. Minus last week with <laughs> Gibbs and Monty. Right, but the, the amount of, of opportunities those guys should get uh, – like You're volume, confident? Confident, no, but volume-wise, I'm okay. Fields and Moore. DJ Moore has been really great in the starts where Field, Fields is playing, so I think you you can be confident in DJ Moore. Um, the Vikings haven't been great at stopping wide receivers. However, their defense has been much, much better. This is not the Vikings of last year. Uh, Flores has come in, really got them – doing great work there's there's a reason why they've won so many games lately without their starting quarterback and starting wide receiver it's their defense and so fields is a little scary to me here uh his rushing baseline i mean this is a both and he had 100 he can, yards last week. he can be bad uh, he can lose this game 
be very bad for NFL playing, throw picks, fumble the ball, and still be good for fantasy. He scares me from like a succeeding level, but for fantasy, I'm going to start fields. Vikings six best against the run over the last six weeks. Are you playing any Bears runners? I don't think so. I mean, we don't know the health of Deonta Foreman yet, so it should be Khalil Herbert as the primary ball carrier. Uh, but it was an ankle injury. Roshan Herbert taking the load potentially. Yeah, it's it's going to be a timeshare no matter what. The Vikings defense has been good. Uh, Justin Fields can vulture touchdowns. We saw at the beginning of the year that you didn't really want any of these Bears running backs, so I'm I'm not uh, I'm not in on the Bears with, running with game. Foreman being questionable and possibly playing. I think that makes it nearly impossible of because you still mess with it. Yeah, of I mean, desperate times call for desperate measures, of course. But this past week, even with Foreman on a bum ankle, I mean, he was the guy who. He he was. It looked like the plan was going to be. It's going to be Deontay Foreman again in the entire game. So that concerns me of you just having no confidence of of knowing who actually will be the guy. I believe Roshan out snapped Herbert in the second half, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, you so you just you you have no you idea. Chandler you over start, any of those, you, right? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. You can't start any of the Bears, and the reason why is because it's a Monday night football game where you don't know if Deonta Foreman is going to be active on a week where you've got three Thursdays and a Friday game. Like, you're going to have to make these decisions before you have the knowledge of if it's going to be with or without Foreman. So just avoid Bears to start. All right, we have a couple of injury updates. Zach Taylor says T. Higgins will likely be out there at practice. Thanks, Zach. What about the game? We'll find out. And um, we got a hashtag for you. If you want to win the signed – Javante Williams jersey, signed DK Metcalf jersey, signed AJ Brown mini helmet. I guess we're going with this one. Hashtag spicy surprise. We're going like to go it. with okay. spicy surprise. Uh, make sure you throw it up on Twitter. Tag us at the FF Ballers. Uh, I'm sorry, on X, the artist formerly known it's, as Twitter. Uh, but go to twitter.com. Um, hashtag spicy surprise. Uh, we got one more big segment before oh, we close it out. We could we could get some thick skin with that one. <laughs> we could. I think we've we've done some research, and uh, the, the team tells me it's going to be okay. All right, probably all right. probably we're not going to be okay. We're fine. What could go wrong on X? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm a little worried. All right, spicy surprise. Into the yeah. face off we go. Fantasy face off presented by DraftKings. Well, I lucked out last week. I finished second. Uh, Cooper Cup went out. I thought I was doomed, but I wasn't doomed. Mike finished last. Yeah, the Brees Hall, no real work in the fourth quarter. And I, what, I lose by three points? Yeah. Cool. That yeah, was great. Yeah, You should Thanks, be Jets. ashamed of yourself. Yes. Wheel of Shame. Speaking of shame, if this is not turkey related, I will shame all of you. Spin the wheel. Well, let's find out. Let's see what we got. So the I wheel mean, is spinning. Jason Rainy had day. a turkey face once. Uh, Banana rama. Banana rama. Gobble. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, gobble, okay. gobble, baby. <laughs> gobble, gobble. Little, all right, good little, work. A little different than the uh, on the kitchen table. We want you to be a real. Yeah, we want live you to. Turkey. To, oh, oh my man. gosh, guys. That smells bad. Holy latex. Yeah, put that latex over your face. Oh, gobble, gobble, <laughs> indeed. Wow, oh, you it's look so loud in here. You look pretty bad. Oh, baby, you're a real turkey. You what's that thing called? The snood? Yeah, he's got a snood hanging off the tip there. All oh right. man. If I uh That's if I if nasty. I pass out here in, in about forty five seconds. You know why? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you look great. Is it because you can't breathe? It's because I can't breathe, and what I'm breathing in is Latex. definitely 100% poison. Yes. He is, uh, yeah, look, we better hurry. Poison. Look, this week we're doing a Thanksgiving slate, so just the Thanksgiving Day game. So um, it should be fun. Uh, Mike, do you want to gobble your way to the first uh, selection? Come on, baby. Stack Prescott, 6,800. Right. I am playing against the Dak CD stack. I ain't going to be. I ain't going to be without that this week. I got okay. Dak. Okay, I've got Dak as well. We all have Dak Prescott. 
Uh, Mike, your running backs. Uh, I've got... <laughs> your snood's getting in the way, bro. I don't know where to put bro. my snood. Is this I don't know where to put my snood. You lay your snood on the mic, yeah. Uh, mm. Oh, my. Okay, so I got uh, Jameer Gibbs at home, 6,800, been an absolute stud. <laughs> and then I'm going with Charbs. I got Zach Charbonnet at 5,300. Uh, I've got the other running back from the Detroit Lions. I've got David Montgomery okay. at 6,300. Think he's going to eat up some touchdowns. And Brian Robinson at 5,900, uh, who's been uh, just really involved in the passing game. S get healthy, Antonio Gibson. Take a week off. Well, I don't have any Lions running backs on the Thursday game. I've got Christian McCaffrey hmm. at 8,700, and I do have Brian Robinson as well at 5,900. Mike, give me those uh, three wideouts. Well, one of them is CeeDee Lamb, of course. I think that everyone's going to have CeeDee. Uh, but then I have Jackson Smith and Jigba at 4,100. And the award winning from the Fantasy Footballers uh, Turkey Day Awards, I got Amon Ross St. Brown at 8,500. Interesting. You went. You doubled up on the big boys. I did. I think Green Bay is going to get shellacked. So you went CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Jackson Smith and Jigba? That is correct. So did I. Those are my wow. three wide receivers. Okay. Exactly. Andy, talk about Brandon Cooks. I have Amon Ross St. Brown. Okay. Okay. I have Brandon Cooks. <gasps> you don't have CeeDee Lamb? He and has McCaffrey. I, yeah, I don't have CeeDee Lamb. And you I have Jamison Williams at 3,400. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I won't be unhappy. No, I know. If CeeDee yeah. Lamb goes off, you beat me in league of record. And Look, you're I, I, I didn't – I want to play the game, man. Do either of you have CMC? No. No. Okay. Nope. We'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, at tight end, I have Logan Thomas at 3,500. So do I. Jay? I wish I did. <laughs> oh, who do you got? I've got the nastiest player I've ever put in this season. I have Noah – no offense. Oh, baby. At 2,700. Uh, maybe Drew Locke comes in and throws it to his old Bronco buddy. Uh, uh, okay. But I I have Jamison Williams as my flex, and then I was out of cash, so I have the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have Christian Watson. Uh, <sighs> so do I. At, uh, in my flex at 4,300, hoping yeah, that the yeah. injuries to the other uh, Packer wide receivers open up things for him. And the Seahawks at 2,600. Well, you, you both. You're both silly gooses. I have Christian Watson at 4,300, and I have the Cowboys. I got the Cowboys at 3,800. Okay. That was. Um, I had the Niners in there for a while, but no, I'm I'm all about the Cowboys. Yeah, the defense Cowboys defense could home. win single handedly. So uh, that is it for Fantasy Faceoff this week, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code Ballers to get $150 in bonus bets instantly when you place a five dollar bet on any football game. That is the code Ballers only at DraftKings Sports book we have done it dragging my snood everywhere what a right spicy. Dragon, mike's got his snood out am i allowed to get out of here uh, uh nope yeah no okay. we uh we got we one more spicy surprise <laughs> we got the big hashtag out there you can you can share it with us we hope every single one of you has a fantastic thanksgiving holiday time with the family time with football be safe out there enjoy it enjoy every minute and um we got a new DFS podcast dropping on Friday as well. So if you get through them, if you got to hear, you're about done with this show and you might need something else to listen to. So you can listen to that. And, um, is the dynasty show out? It is. Okay. That's another one. So Sunday live ballers, live.com catch Mike on Sunday. Uh, he'll be filled up with Jack in the box. That is it. Have a spectacular holiday, everybody. Thank you to everyone in Deucer's alley. I guess you guys can have a good holiday, too. And thank you to the Foot Clan. Goodbye. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.